And I'm roboting, am I? That sucks. Hang on. Welcome back, everybody to uh, new Play It Forward. I'm Beej. It's the Loading Ready Run Entertainment Network, and God willing, the mic works better. No one would have any idea this is take two, except for the fact that we're telling everybody that's what it is. There's no way we're stitching take one onto this. Uh, sounds great. I sound great. It's a Twitch weirdo thing. Yeah, probably just Twitch being weird. Uh, let's just assume that's what happened there. Everything seems to be fine. I was concerned it was something else that I'd set up on my end because uh, I've done some stuff here to try to do things. Let's talk about what this is first before I get before I get rolling. Uh, play it forward. We're we're play it forward is a series where we long play a game, and boy did I pick a long game. Uh, I should also thank everybody who's here. That's the first thing to do. Is uh, thank everybody who is watching. Uh, you are supporting us through Patreon, perhaps. Patreon.com slash Loading Ready Run. That's where our Patreon is. And if you are supporting us there, thank you so much. And if you're not, that's fine. Don't freak out about it. Uh, anything you guys can give to keep things uh, rolling here is really handy to us because it helps us pay a whole bunch of people and uh, and they can pay their rents and their mortgages and all the things they have to pay and put food on the table. And that's important. So the... Um, uh, and also everybody who's backing us on a YouTube memberships and also everyone who's watching here on Twitch and in all the other ways that you guys support the uh, Loading Ready Run initiative as it is by going to maybe our store, store.loadingreadyrun.com. And I will thank all of you people later uh, on Twitch uh, as we as we go through stuff. So a few things I'm going to get out of the way first. I'm anxious tonight uh, for multiple reasons, uh, one of which is I got a new contact lens and we're breaking that sucker in and it's... <laughs> I don't have disposables. These suckers are permanent and uh, or they're rigid. And so it's like that's causing me a little bit of discomfort. And we're working on that. Uh, I'm gonna, I am got to get used to it uh, is the problem. And I could tell you all sorts of things I learned about my eyes because I got like really cool pictures made done. So that was awesome. Uh, but uh, also I was working on some stuff today. And while some good things happened work-wise today, some really irritating stuff happened today work-wise that uh, I can't get into. It just stuff on my shoulders that bugged me. So I'm like dealing with that um, and trying to concentrate on the positive stuff, which you can't always do. So, hmm. and then we set up for the stream and setting up for this stream has been kind of a thing. Uh, Gog.com is where I got the copy of this game because Heather's computer uh, doesn't have a CD-ROM drive in it. And while I could install DOSBox and then uh, go find a portable uh, CD player or Blu-ray uh, like drive or whatever from somewhere and then plug it in and then try to play the game. <laughs> um, I, I, I couldn't. So it's, it's just that it's, it's that complicated. It's like trying to, trying to actually like, there's the CD guys. Like it's all here. Um, here's the, uh, here's, here's the manual, which somebody used as a place to put their, their friggin' uh uh coffee or whatever but yeah it's uh so we got that whole thing in here uh this these were included a sierra boot disc maker and uh a crondor boot disc because back in the day what we had to do is is sometimes we had to free up ems memory or we had to convert all our xms memory into ems memory and then we had to um once we were doing that that's what allowed us to actually uh, uh run the game because you had to have so much actually set up so i bought this a while ago um not when it first came out uh, let's, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of this because we're going to, today we're not really, we're going to play the game. I promise. Uh, I'm going to be playing the game in about like five or 10 minutes. Uh, but I want to set up what this was for me, uh, because my friend Brian, he originally was like, we got to get this game. Like, like, dude, I, I'm going to go buy this game and we got to play it. And I'm like, okay, why? He's like, it's just, it's supposed to be amazing. Like I was seeing it, I was like, okay, I have no idea what this is or what it's about or whatever. Uh, and so he went and bought it. And uh, he had a 46 DX266, which is faster w than what I had at home. And so I'd go over to his place every, not every night, but most nights to hang out. Uh, and 
Um, well, maybe not every night. We eventually ended up living in the same house, which was, I lived in his house for four months. Uh, but in any case, uh, he, um, uh, this is in high school. So in any case, I think like 94, 95, I think is when he actually picked this up, probably about 94. And so that would be like grade 10 for us. I'd go over there. His mom would get some snacks for us and we'd have like a big two pounder of M&M, peanut M&Ms, never eat that many M&Ms. You'd be sick to your stomach and like popcorn or chips or whatever. And we just, we play for hours. We'd, I'd get there and it'd be like, we'd have dinner and say, like, oh, you want to go play Krondor? Yeah, let's go play Krondor. And we'd just go in and we'd play Krondor for, until like two in the morning. And then it's like, okay, bedtime and go sleep on the couch or whatever. And then it's like, okay. And, and it's Saturday, you might go play more Krondor, right? And it's like, we were just really like hammered on this game. It was so much fun. Um, it's, it, it, that's what that game is for me. Is it's, it's, a, it's a crystal of a really great time I had in high school. Um, and I had a good time in high school. I'm not like a lot of people who had a really crappy time in high school, but I sympathize if you had a crappy time in high school because I can understand. But I had a good time in high school and that was one of those things. And so years later, when I had a like income of my own, I was like, man, I should play Crondor again. Where am I going to get it? And you could go online um, to the Abandonware sites and you could find it because Sierra at one point put the floppy disk version on their website because they were trying to push Return to Crondor, which is, it's it's another Crondor game. It's another game apparently set in Midkinia, which is where this is all taking place. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, so they put the floppy disk version up online on their website and they put the patches up too, and it was all free. And so I was like, oh sweet. So I downloaded that off the Abandonware sites because I'm like, that's where you that's where I was getting it from. I had no idea Sierra had it up. I think and Sierra might even have been closed by that point. Um, and I tried playing it and I was just like, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't play this. I, I can't sit down and play this because the music sounds terrible <laughs> and the music is so good. Uh, and, and a lot of people like when they played originally, if they played the floppy disk version, they had like the ad lib or they may, maybe they were lucky enough to have like a nice sound card that had way better FM synthesis, like a Yamaha card with a better FM synthesis, or they maybe even had wavetable synthesis at the time for their MIDI patches. And I did have a wavetable card, but I could not get this thing to sound anything like I remembered because the, the CD audio was amazing. Cause that's the one that my buddy Brian bought was the one with the CD audio. And I was like, Oh man. So I went on eBay and found a, found this copy that I have for CD audio. So, uh, then I had to set DOS box and play it, but it was a lot of fun. And then eventually like on a Linux machine, I had to do all that stuff too, but it's again, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, I would also go buying books with my friends and I knew that this McKinia thing was a thing. So I found out that Raymond E. Feist wrote the, wrote a series of, of uh, books in the McKinia universe. That's what he calls his realm. Uh, the McKinia, the Rift War legacy, I think is what they, what he ended up calling like the, um, uh, the, like the series that stems off of Betrayal at Crondor. Um, but he wrote a bunch of books that happened before that. And, and there have been more books since after that Rift War cycle. Okay. That's it. So in any case, um, his, uh, I, w I decided to start reading them and they are good. Uh, you start with magician. Uh, I think it's magician apprentice and the magician master. The book I think got split into two. So it was a little easier to deal with the paperback. Go read them. They're a very light, easy read. They're very D and D because Raymond D. Feist also used to write D and D modules for TSR. I think privately, uh, and he came with a bunch of really cool ideas and then he ended up being like, oh, if I'm going to keep all these ideas, I can't keep writing them for TSR. I have to start writing them like for myself, for myself and copyright them myself. And that's how the, he got started as an author essentially. Uh, so when I was in, when I was, when I was shopping, uh, Crondor the Betrayal, book one of the Rift War legacy, because the Rift War cycle starts at the beginning. So this book existed. This is a hardcover edition of the book. This is, I think, even a first edition of the book. It doesn't mean that it's worth anything. Um, yeah, it's first edition. Uh, but what it is based on the game of Trail at Crondor. Because while Raymond D. Feist, Ray wrote the, Ray wrote the books and he set up the universe, he didn't write this game. But he wrote the book that's based on the game that's based on his universe. And what they did in order to promote this... Uh, was to give you a free copy of Betrayal at Crontor in the back of the book. So I have two copies on CD. 
of Betrayal at Crondor. Haven't cracked that one because they're the same version. They're 1.02. There was 101 and then there was 102 because it's back when internet wasn't really a thing. So people weren't really like, you didn't do a lot of patching over and over and over again and issuing updates all the time. It's just like, that's it. So, so yeah, he wrote this book that's based on, uh, that's based on, uh, Betrayal at Crondor. So Crondor the Betrayal. Then he wrote two more books, which I believe is Crondor the Assassins and Cr Qu uh, Crondor or something or other. And so he made a trilogy out of what started in this one game. And I have no idea if Return to Crondor is any part of this or not, or if it's technically like game fan fiction based in the universe or not. I don't really have any clue as to how that works. Um, but yeah, really cool. I think like artifact wise, that's what that was all about. Is I wanted to kind of get into the artifact nature of this. So this is all... I'm also working off of a the Betrayal at Crondor Help Web, which was a uh, a website in a I'm gonna say Icelandic country, <laughs> yes, Iceland maybe. Dot uh, is um, that no longer exists. I had to go to the Wayback Machine to find it from 2011. It last updated in 1999. So the site the site shut down 10 years ago. So I have the the last version of that up right now. And also it stopped updating, I think sometime in 1999. So anyway, but it's the, the, the help web's really full of stuff. And I guess without further ado, let's actually start playing the game. Because Gog has this all set up in a great way. Uh, I wish I had more control over it. We're going to, I'm going to, you're going to hear the CD music and I'm going to play the MIDI music after that, because I, I, want to we're gonna probably have to play the mini music so that i can actually adjust the the volume of it because the cd audio there's no way to adjust it because it's built into the gog back end and there's no way to like tell gog lower the cd the fake cd audio it blasts it 100 and you can't hear anything else god willing this works looking good looking good I hope we all heard that. Now, the thing about the CD audio is when the CD audio cuts out, that's it. Generally, the, the tracks don't repeat themselves. So I have a, I can adjust the game audio, which is great. I'm going to try to keep, a, keep an eye on that. Now, the French horns are about the most mm, part of this. I get really into the music of this that it really kind of bugs me a bit because I'm like, I, I, I want it to be this because I remember listening to this and people who listen to the MIDI I went online and listened to people like listening to the uh, like commenting on YouTube about the differences between all different things and people were like oh ad lib for life and I'm like you've got to be out of your mind the ad lib sounds but it's what they grew up with so it's what they remember right I'm going to turn the CD music off very different feel 
I'm using Coolsoft's virtual MIDI synth to play this uh, to play this audio instead. And you might be like, well, why is the CD audio so much better? And it's like, because it was run through an actual Roland MT32 professionally, recorded in a professional way with all the twiddles and bits. So that's, that's me. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to turn this down a bit. The reason to listen to the MIDI audio, as I understand it, is that sound effects are supposed to come through if you use the if you use the MIDI uh, instead of using the um, uh, using the CD? So we're gonna start a new game. Kind of hear that, but there's no way to like twiddle all the different sounds. So okay, this is readable. Thank Christ. I will read so you guys can keep up with this. Another thing I want to say, actually, too, before we go, is that it's a Raymond Feist novels. Uh, every every book that he's written for for the uh, for the um, series, he always starts with two words. It's always two words. Um, in in this one, the prologue starts with "the wind howled," so that's three words. But uh, that's also the prologue. He started, I think, the first book, Magician, with Pug Ran. Like, that's how he started the book. And basically every chapter after that, he was always starting with noun verb is what he always did. So this is very weird that it starts this way, but that's fine. Blood-soaked rags collected at the boy's feet. One by one, he tended the wincing soldier's purple wounds, stitched, salved, bandaged, did what little he could in the leaping golden halo of firelight. Fortunately for his roadside patient, he could do more than most. Fingers slick with alum ointment, he worked fervently to tie off a catgut cord, then brush the injury with a light touch that to the untrained eye would seem only a friendly pat. Others would recognize the ten telltale hand gesture as a magical ward against infection. Done, Owen sighed, wiping his hand in a rust-colored cloth. No guarantees, though. The stitches may hold all the way to Lamut, and then again push too hard and you could be bleeding like a stuck pig on Midsummer's. You did fine, Senor Lockyer replied, smiling approval before rolling down his sleeve. It'll scar, but it's good for a noble's reputation. Let's the kingdom folk know he isn't resting on his laurels and it impresses the ladies. I'll be sure to look you up in Tibburn if I, ever I need stitching up again. The boy accepted the compliment with a humble nod while he packaged away the rest of his medical supplies. His thoughts focused instead on a third man who slumped in the shadows across from them. Despite the manacles that bound the stranger's hands and the distance that separated them, the boy felt dreadfully exposed. His avenues of escape limited should Locklear's elven-looking prisoner decide to liberate himself. What did he do? Owen whispered, jerking his head towards the man. Gorath? Let's just say that he had the disadvantage of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, Locklear said cautiously. He snatched a greenish apple out of his knapsack, offering one to Owen. I have to take him to Krondor. Did he kill someone? Owen asked. No. He attacked you. The senior wiped apple juice from his mouth, shook his head. No, no, not exactly. Well, who cut you up then? Before Locklear could reply... Gorath leapt forward, his chains writhing uh, between his wrists like metallic vipers. Get out from underfoot, Owen! Assassin in the camp! Do not struggle so, Hathseth. I wish to keep you alive. But be glad I do not. The goddess of death will show you greater mercy. All right, easy enough. Into a dark night, escort Gora, escort Gora to Krondor. This is the game. So we have our mouse, obviously. This is a 3D look at what's going on. Um, the, uh, let's see here. I'm facing south. If we were to view an overhead map, this is where we're at. We can zoom out a bit. We can zoom in a lot. There are sound effects, and I hope you can hear them okay. We can camp. Uh, we can also go to a larger map to say this is where we're at currently. We are here uh, facing south. Yabin's right over there. Uh, Lamut is further down. Um, anything that's a white town is a much larger uh, place to go, and it actually has like beautiful drawing. Um, the Yabon is, uh, will be a small village that you can walk in and out of in, uh, in 3D, uh, in 3D mode. We're trying to get to Krondor, which is all the way down there. 
Uh, so we'll probably just follow the road by the side, go through like uh, quest near Quester's View by Sarth and down to Krondor. Um, and to get out of this uh, view, we go to Main. Now, when we're here, uh, I can click on these guys to see what they have in their uh, in their inventory. So right now we have uh, Locklear, we have Owen, and we have Gorath. Uh, if I right click on them, I can actually see what all their ratings are currently. It's 55 to 55 health, and then stamina is at that. Speed is 4, strength is 17. And this is an interesting thing. It shows you, of course, as these fill up, but also the numbers tell you how they're doing in any sort of um, uh, ability. And so if I want Locklear to be really good at defense, if I click the handle, it lights it up. And as long as I have one of these things lit, that's about 50% faster in terms of how fast they will level up in defense uh, or in weapon craft. But what if I want to be good at weapon craft and armor craft? Well, if I do that, they will both level up faster than the rest of those, but not as fast as if I only had one or the other selected, which means we're going to be coming into the screen an awful lot because at times we're going to be like, okay, I am now in an inn. I'm going to bard. So I'm going to click the thing and it's going to improve my barding and everything else is going to be cleared. And so I'm in and in, I'm doing the barding, I'm practicing, I'm getting better, faster. And that means I can make more money as a bard. Uh, if I click on the people, it moves them along. So there's Owen. Uh, he is a spellcaster, so he has spells that he can do, and they each fun fit under different sigils. And I'm pretty sure there's a way to see what these do. Oh, there is not. All right. And then, of course, we have Gorath. He's uh, he's what they call a Moradil. He's not uh, he. It's it's not it's like being an elf, but it's like being a cousin of an elf. Uh, the Moradil uh, live in the north the north uh, the north ward, the north lands of Midkemia. They live in the north. Um, so in any case, uh, the speed is going to be how fast they can move on on the little chessboard when we start to have a fight. So he can't move that fast, but strength is going to be one of those modifiers that really helps like other things. And as you can see, I can't I can't level up any of those. And then this is going to be where there's things like if you're poisoned, if you have the plague, if something else, that's that all goes there. So for the time being, of course, then we have uh, a place for a sword, a place for a bow, a place for uh, armor. And then same thing here. And then he's, of course, missing his armor and he has a staff because he's a he's a spellcaster. And then we have all this places to put stuff. Now, in this game, everybody also has to carry rations. Laying the brown parcel aside, Owen carefully undid the short length of string that bound the package. Although standard rations generally contain salted sweetmeats, hard rolled sliced apples and strawberry tarts, he was eager to get at whatever food was inside. You can do this for everything and you can see exactly how much of any use of these things. And these things also stack. Um, these help us heal if we get hurt, uh, but if you're going to use these, you have to use them and you have to generally also sleep. Uh, torches, again, lighting up the way around you, that kind of thing. So I'm hoping that this game lives up to how I remember it. Um, so we have 20 there. That's good. So we're going to start the game like, oh yeah, and this is our sovereigns and royals. So gold and silver, essentially. And then if we have keys, we have a standard ass key, just a peasant's key can be used in kind of standard ass locks. That's fine. So what we're doing immediately we're going to loot in a body. That's how everything starts. And I'm hoping that this is going to live up to what I remember and that I really get into it. And if I don't, then God. So we'll see. Uh, I, I have never made it past, I think, chapter four, which I think was the spyglass and the spider. Um, anyway, so we have here four rations. That's great. We're going to need those. Uh, oh, yeah, you can share them with the party if you want. You can also up and down how many you want. He also has pick locks. That's great. Uh, we're going to take all those, uh, probably give them to... Who is our strongest picking right now? Uh, 25, 5, and 50. And we're going to give the lock layer. All right. So lock layer gets the lock picks for the time being. We can have all of those. For the and there's nothing else in the body. That's fine. We're going to look around a bit. Back up a bit. Make sure I didn't miss anything. There's some, that looks like fire pits and a chest. All right. Luckily grew to his teeth. Well, they had agreed the box should be open. He was privately concerned the previous user might have left behind an unpleasant surprise because things can be trapped. Ah, royals. Excellent. 
themselves drop on somebody. It doesn't matter. They all go into uh, into a, a pot that we keep together. So I'm going to use that. The ashes were cold. Wiping the grime off his hands, Lockler shook his head. Someone or something obviously set up camp here, but it's hard to say just when. Well, it was us. This is actually our camp. Uh, what I'm looking for is... Okay. Let's save really fast. Because I might as well have a save game to start the game. And we're going to start this with uh, Beach Piff. Uh, we're going to call it Beach Piff 01. Good. That's awesome. We're going to leave that there for a second. So now what I'm going to do... If I interact with the game while I am outside of the game, I'm going to leave you guys on this for a second. Uh, if I interact with the game while I'm outside of the game, you're going to find that there's a... Um, uh, you, that's why the MIDI paused, because it was like trying to play audio, but it couldn't play the audio. So there's a trick uh, here. This is the start of the cheating we're going to do this evening. And I didn't say that right off the bat, and I probably should have, but we're going we're gonna to do our best to cheat. Um, what we're trying to do, Hassett's lying in front of us, we're going to use something called stack bug. Uh, and all we have to do is just, this lets us stack stuff on top of each other, uh, on top of each other. And that means that um, uh, we can, uh, we can duplicate things. And if we can duplicate enough stuff, then we have stuff we can sell. So if I'm, if I'm reading the thing on how to do this, because I want to be exactly sure how to do this. Uh, we need to, we need to have, um, an item with a minimum of two charges and a cache with one empty slot. And Hats's body is a cache. So let's step out of this. Go back to the game. He is a cache. So what we do now is we, we're going to give him some things to hold that fill up that cache. And let's take the herbal packs. That's a good thing to put there too. So now he has three spots. Uh, he has three, three things open. His body technically has four things uh, that I can fill up, so I need to actually give him one more thing. Uh, the torches. Okay. So now what I do, I'm going to reread this to make sure I get this right because I don't want to be futzing with this the entire time. So now it says, try putting something else on the body. If I do this, okay. We shouldn't put anything more on the body, Gorath said, checking your rucksack which down from the corpse's shoulder. Anything more than there's a good chance our tampering will be detected. Good to know. So what we do is we take something back. In this case, let's take the torches back. That's probably a good thing to do. And I need to, let me just read this again, because we're going to be doing this a, a lot, but I just want to be sure I get this right. Do that, do that, do that, do that. Poisons, whatever, whatever. Okay, that's how it's done. So now what I do is, if you try dragging something to somebody else, it's like, is that what you really want to do? It's like, no, I want to give, uh, I want to give one to Owen. And Owen takes this one, and he puts it on the body. There it is. I go here again, and I say, okay, what do you want to do? And I want to give him one. So Owen's got, Owen's got one. There's one there, and there's 24 there. And there's one there. It's one there. And there's 24 there. Yep. It's a bug that they, I don't know if they ever actually fix, fix this or not. Um, but it is a thing that we're going to do a little bit here at the top of the game because we're going to make some money. And I think there might even be a faster way to do this. Let me just have a look. There is not. So now anything that stacks, you can do this with. Um, I could use it with the rations if I wanted to get extra rations and fill everybody up on that. That's, that's a thing you can do. Grab that, we'll do that. And oh wait, no, I want to drag the one onto the body. And then drag one onto here. Yeah. 
do that. How's Locklear doing on space? He's got lots of space. Goes on there. Goes on there. That goes on there. That goes on there. That goes here. That goes there. He gets a little involved. Uh, I also thought about just hex editing to give myself a ton of money. Uh, and was like, ah, you know what? I'd rather, if I'm going to cheat, I'd rather do all the, the glitchy sh uh, stuff you can do in game as opposed to doing any hard uh, editing. But I was like, if this doesn't work for whatever reason, then I'm going to, uh, um, then I would probably just hex edit the thing to be like, let's just give ourselves a lot of money so we can kind of get a good start to the game. Because um, I don't want to have to like be hunting around for stuff or risk people dying and, and all that at the moment. I'd rather just actually like play the game uh let's see what do we got here that's a lot uh let's have a look to see what the recommendation should i just fill inventories restoratives are worth a lot so it's it's kind of the thing uh, of the things we start with they're worth quite a bit Cool. All right. Uh, what else? Let's go a little further. Let's. Is there one on the body? There is one on the body. So we're just going to take one of these. I guess I'll take this one. And we'll uh, give Owen one. We'll go off a of Locklear's uh, 10 right now, I think. That'll be fun. We'll do that. Go back to here do that that'll probably be lots when i uh have done these i don't have to worry about going any further but we are the 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 idea here is to um max out or at least get ourselves an awful lot of stuff to carry around now the other uh we want to we want to like kind of set ourselves up pretty good at the start of the game and the second thing i wanted to do was uh, to do something i was working on doing beforehand um which was going through the game backwards um, because that would allow me to work on a bunch of, uh, uh, would allow me to like have a lot of time practicing fighting stuff. Uh, it would have, a, um, it would have a lot of time for me to like build up my levels and everything. We'll see exactly how into that I am. And also, uh, it's also a means of, uh, getting, um, uh, picking up a bunch of stuff earlier in the game that you could normally get it. Like I get some really good swords and get some really good armor that might not be around in every place. Um, it means that I can like pick up some scrolls or something. The thing I have to be careful with though, of course, is that I don't play these three characters for the entire game. I only play them for a, uh, for parts of the game, which means that if I'm going to, uh, whatever I do for these guys and, and build up their levels, it means that when I pick up new people, there will be some people in my party who have incredibly stacked levels and there'll be people who don't, and then have to pay more, uh, pay more attention to, um, you know, helping their levels up. There's a great trick called the broken crossbow trick um, where because of the way that that's what I want, because of the way that um, uh, stores work in the game. If you anytime you sell something to a store, the store will have it for the rest of the game. And that doesn't mean that I'll sell them like um, if I if I sell them like my 98 uh, percent broadsword here. They will, that store will always have 98% broadswords for the rest of the game. I'll always be able to come back and buy 98% broadsword. Um, what that means is if I sell, uh, if I sell, uh, drank it, well, whatever. Accidentally double clicked on it. That's what happens. I guess I'll just have to use another one. If, uh, If I, if I have a crossbow, uh, they, they recommend like broken elven crossbow is a good one for this because, uh, for reasons it's a light crossbow. So they're easy to repair, uh, cause you can just get a bowstring string and put a new bowstring on it. Um, if I, if I, uh, break a crossbow's string, so I, I shoot it enough that eventually the string just breaks. 
I can take anything that's broken into a store and sell it to them. And they'll give me like a royal for it. And then they'll sell it back, I think, for like a royal or 10 royals or whatever. So what that means is then I have access to a store that has a whole bunch of really nice crossbows that are broken that only cost that would only cost me a few royals to buy. And then I can buy a bunch of really cheap bowstrings, put them on, and sell very expensive uh uh bows. Uh, and make money off of that. And the stores are are going to be like, oh, that's awesome. Yes, we. I totally want to buy a dozen or or 40 crossbows or whatever, right? Oh, that's not what I want to do. Uh, give. Wait, hang on. If I drop this here, oh, the whole thing goes. Okay, I can't just go give. So I want to uh, give one to him. Problem is, I want to also be entertaining while doing this, but it is troublesome to be entertaining at the same time. Put that one there. Or I should have several. That's good. Uh, you got a few left. There's one. One there. Your one that's there in there and then put that one just on top of here that's good drag that on the Gorath all right let's think here what do we got do I do more I don't know I mean, I can, everyone can have a 24 as a treat. So I could do this for Owen, and that's fine. And everyone still has their 24s. I could also uh, just... I can make this simpler. Uh, so I got 26. So 24 uh, means 8 to everybody. And I have 10. That's probably fine for now. I mean, I could st I could stack those, I guess. And we could give everybody a full 24. That would save me from having to go looking. Ah, that's a good point. Wait. Give all but one. Okay. Do that. We need to do that. Do that. And we have that now. And we do that. And we need to that. And that. And we have a full stack. We do that. And we do that. And everybody's got so many now. Great. And we need three. And everybody's got three, uh, an even amount, which is just aesthetically pleasing. I could also do the same thing for the lockpicks. In fact, maybe we'll do that. I'll get a full pack of lockpicks while we're here at the top of the game. Maybe I'll even do that with the torches as well to have a full set of lock picks. Nice to have a full set of torches. And you know what? Let's leave those there. And we will dupe the herbal packs so I can have a full pack of those. That's good. Full pack, full pack, full that. If you're missing armor, 
I believe it just shoves it into the first armor hole that you have. <sighs> okay. So we can start with this. Now, basically, uh, there are... This works with anything that's a cache, and you can do it right from here, obviously, like we just did. But you can also... Um, you can you can also do it from like in treasure chests and other things like that. Um, pretty straightforward kind of idea. Uh, and yeah, there's music does not play in most parts of this game. It's it's a very quiet game. It's just lots of like incidental audio and stuff. Uh, but the music comes in when you go to interesting things happen. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn on stealth for everybody because we're gonna walk around for a bit. And I want to go to, I want to go over here. We're going to go east. Thank goodness for compasses. All right, now the story starts. Goroth seemed distant, though the mortal warrior didn't appear grieved about killing the assassin that had fallen from the Northlands. His eyes had a baleful look in them that seemed something between hatred and rage. Several times he glanced back at the corpse that lay behind him in the dust, his thoughts unguessable from his expression. Do you wish to bury him, Owen said? We could do that. Gorath, it is not our way. I am simply somewhat disturbed that he should come after me. He was a kinsman. There are other things that trouble me as well. Delicon's assistant. Delicon's a big bad guy. Delicon's assistants are slow, but not altogether stupid. I guess he's not really a big bad guy, but he's like the head of the mortal, but whatever. Another like Hasseth, and you'll only have my corpse to drag before your Prince Arutha. Locklear. Sorry you don't get off that easy. As long as you're under my command, you're forbidden to die, mortal. I had gone to I've gone too far too I've gone to far too much trouble to keep you keeping you alive to bury you now. I've gone to far too much trouble keeping you alive to bury you now. It's time that we took the chains off of you. It'll be far easier for you to defend yourself if your hands are free to swing a sword again. Owen, you're not going to just set him free, are you? I thought you said he was your prisoner. He, was my pri he is my prisoner, Owen, but the circumstances are terribly complicated. Even if he chose to sneak off, he'd be lucky to make it to the next town alive. This is the third such assassin we've run into since we left the Northlands, and I have a feeling that more will be waiting for us. He will be much safer with me and I with him. Gorath, as the boy would be... If you were to whisper the wrong word in the wrong ear, he could easily be the death of us. Me? Who am I going to talk to? I'm not even heading in the same direction. Wouldn't be a matter of who you talk to, Owen. There will be ears listening for a word of a mortal traveling, traveling with a novel. Damnation, I should have thought about this when you entered camp. For the time being, you're my squire. Once we arrive safely at the palace, you'll be free to go on your own way. But I have pressing business in Tiburn. This is not a subject of debate. We must get to Krondor. My mission is of critical importance, and I don't have time to improvise an easy solution. The only other possible option would be to slit your throat and leave you dying. I have absolutely no desire to do that. But let's get moving before Delicon's assassins, excuse me, catch our scent again. They'll be likely come looking when Hasseth doesn't return from his mission. And story. Hi. Uh, sub notifier is kind of loud, so I was wondering if you could turn it down. Oh. It's that system sound. Sure. Yeah. Um. Hang Can on. I... Yeah. Go right ahead. Cool. You see, Control F10 uh, tells DOSBox to release the mouse so you can use it in Windows. Control F9 closes DOSBox. That should be a lot better. So keep, keep an eye out for that, watching the game just disappear. Let's, uh, let's save the game. And at this point, I think we're just going to use the same file. That's okay. So basically, I can do the stack bug thing anytime that I want. You don't have to do it right at the top of the game. I decide to do it right now. And you might be wondering, okay, so you seem like you're being incredibly careful. Yes. All right, so you can lock yourself to a road, which is really cool. It means that it will auto-turn for you. There's Yabon. And yeah, we're not really going the right direction yet, but we will. And... We have two, two different things we can cast. Ah, Scent of Sarag is to detect trap chests. Now, every time you cast something, um, I have 85 out of 85 health and stamina. It will cost me five to cast it. And the moment I cast it, it'll last for 12 hours because that's what the rations are for. Because you eat, I think every 24 hours you eat. 
So that's how it, it doesn't count as like you eat every eight hours. It's like, no, in, in, you're going to consume at least one entire ration in a, in a 24 hour period. Um, and there is also nighttime and stuff too, to, to contend with. So let's see here. This is Yavin. I, ah. Owen, it's best we move through town as quickly as possible. I left a wedding party here not too long ago and it might raise unpleasant questions if I were seen here again. We may need supplies, Gorath said. Owen, oh, there's a shop here called the Crossroads where we might be able to pick up a few things. Otherwise, we should be cautious. Well, I've got stealth turned on at the moment, so I should be fine. And so why are we in the trees? Well, because the trees are also a good place to, like, look for stuff. So there are some houses we got in behind. Uh, there is, looks to be an inn. Oh, doesn't see anybody's about. Luck's with us. They're, these are usually shops. Sometimes they're sheds. Aha, a bell rang. No sooner Locklear had managed to get the door open than he found the shopkeeper was escorting him inside. Everywhere Locklear looked, polished metal gleamed. As much as a temple to war as with any temple of Tith. That's kind of a... We're going to hear about gods an awful lot. Tith, I believe, is the god of war. Uh, the cramped shop offered a startling variety of weapons and armor. And if you tab, you can go between everything you can do in a scene. Which helps, because it used to have to, like, do this stuff where you'd comb over every pixel to try to find if there's anything cool you can do. You can just always hit tab and it'll go back and forth. So now we're in a shop. You can turn on haggling. Oh, right. If you right-click on them, it tells you all about who these people are. <laughs> so Owen's father is the Count of Tiburn. He's going back to see his dad. And we can go through this stuff. Uh, I'm not entirely interested in doing a lot of that at the moment. Um, Gorath. Uh, he's an eligible claimant to the Mortal Throne in Sarsargoth. But he's not really that kind of dude. Critic he's critical of uh, leadership of Delicon. And there's like a whole bunch of stuff in here. Very interesting. Gives you a sense of how old they are. Um, anyway, we've got haggling turned on. So what I'm looking to do is sell, sell, sell. Oh, he can't buy because he's not an item shop. And I believe that's all he's got. I don't think there's another... Usually an arrow if it tells you to go somewhere else. But yeah, this is some of this stuff, right? It's like, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Like... Um, you can right click on stuff. It will tell you things about them. So that's kind of cool. Just clicking on something doesn't necessarily do anything about it. Um, we don't have, we don't have the, oh wait, that's the arrow that moves to the next thing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we don't have a har uh, an armor's hammer, so we can't repair our own armor yet. Uh, we don't have a whetstone. I could buy one. Not going to worry about buying one yet. I want to get to a place where I can actually toss stuff in. I'm pretty sure uh, uh, silver, it's 10 silver to a gold. I think they just did a decimal thing because it was easier. So, yeah, we could look at everything. Distributed once a year from the Temple of Tith, clerical oil cloths were often resold by the poor to any who would buy. The oil which was soaked into the fiber had numerous qualities, though it was best known for its magical effects when smeared on edged weapons or on armor. So, yeah. That's what I could buy if I had money. I don't have money and he doesn't want to buy any of my stuff. A royal is like a penny, a sovereign is like a, uh, a dollar. We should just kind of think of it in that way. Let's like... That's just silver. Silvers and gold is sovereigns and royals, right? It's like, why didn't this say 2S6R? It should, because, you know, that's confusing. But that's confusing. So why, right? Locklear checked their funds. Although the values had fluctuated in the past five years due to the trading disagreements with Kesh, the last time he had checked with traders, there had been 10 silver royal, royals to each golden sovereign, a favorable exchange rate. So, of course, they had some of either type of coin. After thorough searching all their possessions, he discovered they had 20 sovereigns and five royals. All right, let us uh, let us leave this place. It is a useless place to me. We'll have to probably go to Lamute. Um, ah, yes, definitely not a good idea. This is my aunt's house. As much as I've enjoyed the opportunity to explain why I'm traveling with a mortal, I think we should leave. 
Uh, Locklear knocked to the door. We're going to see this a lot. For a long moment, he leaned against the door frame as he waited, positioning himself so he could listen for the sounds of any stirrings inside. When at last it was evident no one was coming, he stepped back with a shrug. Doesn't seem that anyone's about, Locklear said. Aha, we could open this abandoned building. So now for this, turn your lock picking on. And I don't think it's going to bother anybody else's lock picking, but I'm going to turn them on anyway. The lock maker knew what he was doing. It's beyond my ability. I can't open it. I could try the key. Now, you see that little line in the middle of the key? <laughs> oh, hello, Affinity Artifacts. Thank you for the raid. That little line in the middle of the key should give you a hint is that this key is not very strong in the first place, and it will probably break off in this lock. So I need to be cautious, right? Uh, lock clear frown. I can try picking it, but I don't guarantee success by any means, he said, slipping over the pouch of pick locks. So we can open. Uh, the lock looks complicated. So he can't do it. Nobody else has a higher ability than him. But the fact that I did that might actually contribute to that working. So we can try again and again. There we go. Pick lock snap. Cursing Locklear would draw all evidence of his fouled attempt to pick the lock and threw away the broken thieving tools. So much for that pair of pick locks. Still can't do it. Still can't do it. Had to get rid of the extra one anyway. Now, is he going up? He is. Look at that. And as you know, we can just make more pick locks. So that doesn't work. But it's nice to have a place to practice that's not like kind of you know, not going to get, uh, get us in too much trouble. I like the sound of the one breaking too. So an interesting thing sound-wise, because I was talking about the audio with this, um, is that uh, the there was a uh, Sierra games at a certain time. Uh, the audio driver could basically do Sound Blaster or could do MIDI. That was kind of that was kind of all they could do. Um, so. You had to pick one or the other, I guess, when you were kind of like listening to stuff, right? Um, and then at a certain point, they made an audio driver that could handle doing both. There you go. And I think the um, uh, somebody discovered that you could take that audio, uh, the, the, the Sierra's new audio driver, and you could put that, you could marry that to Crondor. Uh, so you could basically get that from somewhere else and then have it play back the audio. Uh, and actually then it would be like, well, I can play both. You had to do not just add the driver in, but you had to make a couple other changes to the um, to the file to say, I want to use a general MIDI driver and I want to do this, I want to do that. Um, yeah, thank you, Arclight. You were, you were looking for that. And, and I was going to do all that and then decided that I would much rather play the game at least once on stream just so I could get this out of the way to be like, we can actually do this. We can play the game. And if I need to do, uh, if I, if I decide this, like, no, no, I really want to do this so I can have both things going at the same time and I'm going to go through the effort of doing it, then I will do it then. But for now, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to futz with it too hard. Is anyone else going up? Nobody else is going up because nobody else is picking. It's only Locklear who's doing it. But he's now at a cool 33%. It's a good sound. And I know, you know, 
Lockpick Simulator 1993 is maybe not what everyone tuned in for tonight. I get that. We're going to get back to the actual game, but I am going to use this opportunity to, to up my lockpick level a little bit. And like I did say, we're going to spend a bit of the time of the first session of this game. It's 9 o'clock. I'm going to have to take a break here in a second. Uh, but I want to spend the first part of this game actually starting the... Um, uh, setting everything up so I can have a, an easier time in the game, having uh, more money available, which means I can buy better, um, I can buy better armor and better weapons. I'm not sure if every time I break a pick lock is that's about match to the time it's taking me to actually go up a percentage level or not, but I am getting better. Which will be nice because if I actually manage to crack this thing open, like, well, Christ, that could take a while. But if I actually manage to get good enough to crack this open, I can probably open a lot of other things earlier in the game as well. Um, just means having to go find places to uh, to uh, to do this, uh, to, to practice even more if I need to. Another funny thing, um, the way the game is structured is that when you, when you fight enemies in a chapter, uh, that's it. When you kill them, they're gone. And they might, they they might come back, uh, in future chapters only. They don't come back in the chapter you're in. So if you were if you manage to find enemies and you fight them and you win, uh, that's congratulations. You you won. You you beat the the dudes, but you can't grind, which is why a lot of this stuff becomes pretty important because it's like you want to get better at doing what it is you're doing. So you try to you try to balance. Uh, you try to balance what you can actually do, uh, you know, by being like, well, I better I better turn lockpicking on so that I'm very good at, at lockpicking, or at least I can try to practice being good at lockpicking. Uh, lock um, but the... Uh, that means you have to, like, you have to kill everybody, and that means you also have to turn on, like, uh, your defense so you can get your defense to go up, and you have to turn on, like, accuracy crossbow or accuracy casting... Uh, so you can practice th and then practice those things so you can get better at doing those things while you're doing it so you actually stand a chance at being better, um, which is a little frustrating. It's also very 1990s kind of feeling. And yeah, there is a lot in this game that is built around um, a little bit of the uh, forcing you to f uh, focus on the things that you want to do and making it more excuse me, making it more difficult to achieve levels or to, to train your skills. And in that respect, it reminds me a lot of games like Final Fantasy II or Secret of Mana where um, you practice and you practice, you practice with a certain thing and then you get really good at that thing. But the next time, like if you end up upgrading, like moving to a different weapon or if you want to try uh, 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 anything else, it's like, of course you don't know how to fight well with like a spear because you've been fighting with a sword all this time. You know how to fight well with a sword. You want to fight well with a spear, you're going to start from scratch and learn how to fight like that. Which if you're a person like me who likes to see all of your things rise over time, it gets frustrating to discover that um, you've had to work and work and work at... Um, you have to work and work and work at this like... Uh, one skill and then you stop and you're like now i have all the other bars i have to fill why did i do that to myself we're at 40 percent already that's actually pretty good it's only taking a few minutes uh so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to commercial um which we can do pretty easily from here i'm gonna because i just can jump out so i'm gonna go to commercial and then for the next uh three minutes i'm gonna crack uh lock picks and get myself a drink and when you guys come back from the ads hopefully we'll uh we'll be good to go. So uh, stick around, watch the ads or watch our ads, and we'll see you in a few minutes. There we go, gameplay left. And back to, eh, what an idiot. And now back to the wall. My wallet's in the car. All right. It's gonna. I have my light pajama pants on right now because it is. It gets warm in this room when you have LED lights on and the computer is running, playing this epic game from 1993. Yeah, it's, I I wonder what the task manager is just like. It's like zero, one, zero, one, two percent. Oh wow. 
But yeah, uh, if you are, if you're wondering about uh, things you can do, like if you, I love MIDI because when I was younger, um, the, when we got our Pentium uh, of all the things we got, it was made by a company called Scenix, S-E-A-N-I-X. Um, and the, uh, uh, I actually ended up working at a computer store that we sold Scenix computers. We actually bought the computer from there. And then like a few years later, I ended up working at the store. And so, uh, and they were really good computers built in, built with custom motherboards, uh, built in Canada, um, of all places. I, I imagine assembled in Canada, the motherboards might not have been made in Vancouver. Um, I'm not entirely certain, but, um, the, uh, um, the computer I bought had a, I think it was a Pentium 100 at the time, was it? No, it was, maybe, I can't remember. Um, it, the Yukon motherboard had a, um, had a Yamaha uh, sound card built into it on board, which was unusual because it's like, oh, well, why would, why would that be, you know, to have that thing? And I didn't know this is like an OPL3 or whatever is what it was. And it meant that it had sound fonts but it had yamaha opl sound fonts which are different than the open sound fonts sound font 2 standard which is out now i believe um that meant that my my card had wavetable synthesis and when i found that out that i was like i wait i have wavetable synthesis on my on my card because i would play like i play video games at my buddy's house and then i'd like play them at my house and i'm like they sound a little different i don't know why and then i started looking into it and i'm like oh wait my all my buddies have like they using like the this crappy Sound Blaster 16 audio or or even they have like a Sound Blaster 8 or whatever and it's just not really that good and like Commodore 64s had really good sound like way 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 even before then um so it always sounded it was really weird to me to be like why do PCs have such terrible audio and um so it was like uh it, it, there was there was this thing that I that I did um, so I started, I started like reading these instructions and like reading manuals and like trying to find everything out that I could. Cause it's like, you gotta, you gotta find out why, what I can do with this thing and discovered, you know, well, there's FM synthesis and there's wavetable synthesis. I'm like, holy crap. Okay. Well, let's try the wavetable thing. And, and I did, and it was very limited because it was not a very expensive sound card that built into the motherboard. Uh, but whatever it could do was way better than what I, all my friends had available. I was like, this sounds amazing. And so then as I, uh, once I got older, um, I eventually ended up buying a Sound Blaster AWE 64, which was a not the best investment. I should have probably, when the 64 came out, I should have bought the AWE 32. But at the time, we didn't have a lot of people. There weren't a lot of websites that were like testing the 32 versus the 64. Um, and and talking about, see, I'm not breaking lockpicks anymore, eh? Um. But there weren't a lot of people who tested the 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 um, the 32 versus 64. But it turns out they're essentially the identical game, or sorry, the identical the, the identical card. The 64 just had like something extra on board that wasn't really that um, that wasn't really that important, right? Uh, I'll click through this in a second, and. Um, so that's when I started really getting into like, I want, if I'm going to have anything on a sound card, I want to have wavetable audio. And then you start hearing about like turtle beach cards. And then you start hearing about like the cool stuff they can do. You start hearing about like the Gravis ultrasound and the cool stuff they can do in terms of audio and like really looking into like, cause it's like, well, what can I do? It's like video cards are not a thing back in the day. You couldn't really like, like, and I'm talking the day, like pre ATI pre NVIDIA, like when the voodoo card was the thing to buy, but it was a few hundred dollars. You're like, I don't know about that. And, and what am I going to play on my Voodoo card? Because I don't really do a lot, of, a lot of games in the first place, but I can still play most games on the cards I've got. And I'm just like, what should I, what, sh what should I, like, so sound cards was a thing because I was like, that's really interesting. And then I had a buddy of mine um, show me uh, mod files, which blew my mind. I was like, you can do what? And it's like, yeah, they, you bundle all the samples into the file itself. So it's bigger, except that it's not it's not a whole wave file. And then when he showed me MP3s, like a few years later, I was, I was completely blown away because I'm like, that's 10 times compression over a wave file. We can finally fit, you can finally fit like a whole song in, in like a, he's like, yeah, in like seven megs in like eight megs. I'm like, oh my God, that you could pre like, if they get them any smaller, you can put them on a floppy disk, like that kind of idea, right? So it's like the, the idea of like learning all those things and like this, because that's part of, I think also too, it's like, 
growing up in that kind of era of the technological revolution, I'm sure is like when kids were growing up in the in the era of like when when cars were just like experimental places to do crazy shit. So everybody was like, I'm just going to try stuff and learn things. You learn little things about everything because the, the innovation isn't happening fast enough to outpace you. It is these days. It's harder for me to keep up with a lot of the innovation. So I just kind of glance off at, uh, quite a bit. But but back then, I was like, man, I, I wanted like some of this cool stuff. And so sound cards is where I started looking into that. And then the wavetable thing with MIDI files and like looking at all these other uh, like screen tracker and mod files and like all the other kind of stuff, just trying to get a sense of what's the things you can do uh, with sound cards. And, um, you know, it's, it's like being able to listen to MIDI files on my computer, but load in sound fonts to get better audio just made MIDI's so much better. And all my friends were like, MIDI suck. I'm like, no dude, MIDI's are really cool, but you gotta have the right hardware or else it's not worth it. So anyway, um, moving on through this. I mean, I would love for them, I'd, I'd love for somebody who loves Betrayal at Crondor to get a hold of this of this soundtrack and be like, I'm going to resample it through like modern synths. Or I'm going to find, uh, an, I'm going to assemble an orchestra of people online, uh, semi-professionals or even professionals who have time on their hands to be like, play to a click track, we're going to put this stuff together. We're going to assemble it all online. And we're going to do an, the, the entire orchestral soundtrack as played by people from all across the internet. It would be a lot of fun. But anyway, we picked open this, uh, we picked open the lock on the small building. Uh, this used to be some sort of laundry shop, but apparently it's gone out of business and I've broken into it. Let's have a look around. That was time well spent. Owen now has armor. <laughs> Thank Christ. The boys don't. They're more worried about their armor. It's not great, but it'll it'll hopefully do. But Owen's finally got some armor. And how's Lock Lockie's picking? 51%. So it seems that now he can fairly uh fairly um reliably, I guess, get into most uh most locks, uh, the peasant locks anyway. And of course, if I get to a if I get to a certain point, um I, I, I probably won't have to like um, uh, even use keys anymore at all. I know when you get to a certain point with your lockpick is so good, it's like you can pick open keys that have like steel, uh, you can pick open locks that have steel keys. The better, the the more sturdy your keys in the game. And it's just like, okay, cool. I mean, it'd be neat if it was like a lockpicking mini game, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, what's in here? Goroth pointed to the house. I don't know, and replied to the unasked question. I don't know. I know it's not a relative's house. Good enough, Goroth said, turning on his heels. He marched to the door and knocked lightly as Owen watched the street. After a few moments, a disheveled-looking man answered the door. They talked for a short while and discovered the man had spent the better part of the night trying to break into a laundry shop that had recently got out of business. The owner closed up shop and never returned the suit of armor I was having cleaned. If you can get it in there, it's all yours. I'm very tired. Excuse me, I'm going to go back to sleep now. <laughs> all right. Well... Good armor. All right. Nobody's home. Uh, that's, there are some other, have we hit all the houses? That's the aunt's house. Uh, no one's in that house. No one's about. Okay. So what we want to do is I want to go to the nearest shops to me. Yabin is not going to help me much. Tearsog is going to be a slog. Uh, L'Oreal, um, because it wants me to walk along this path, we're going to have the easiest fights along this path and we are not very strong yet. So I want to get to Lamut because there's going to be more for me to do in Lamut than if I was to go over to here. So we're going to go to Lamut first and try to start doing the things that I need to do in this game. Um, so mechanically was this game ahead of its time? Nevermore asks. I don't know. I think it was, uh, ambitious is what it was. It set a lot of, uh, it set a lot of ideas up. Uh, for what you could do with a video game, I think. You can't strafe in this, I don't think. It is very much a rotate and, and walk kind of situation. Um, but this was, this felt really different. Oh. Is it nightfall already? Okay, so it's nightfall. So we could camp. 
And how it does this, of course, is you have even amounts of day and night. I wish that they would push this stuff a little past that. But, but you know, hey, that's fine. Because uh, when it's dusk, it really feels like dusk. So if we sleep until the morning, that's fine. Owen has so many rations, we can spread this around quite easily, too. And it generally makes sense to do stuff like this, uh, to camp for the night somewhere. Uh, let me, let me quickly pop out of here. I just want to double check the, um, let's see. I'm just looking at the, the guide because it, it mentioned some other places I could go to find stuff, um, that's nearby. So on the way, there's the great sword and the elven armor in the Yavin shop. Um, if I wanted to buy great swords and elven armor for everybody, it's it's twenty four hundred or uh, just about twenty four hundred um, uh, sovereigns. And there's more enemies. Uh, there's a there's an enemy south of Lamut, so I have to be very cautious about that as well. I could use a walkthrough for this. We're not going to go to the walkthrough just yet. Uh, we'll probably get there though. Let's uh, turn on stealth. So you might be wondering why you're turning on stealth. Well. Um, anytime I can avoid, uh, if I can see somebody in the distance, maybe there's just a thing along the road here. There we go. All right. Next part of this game is very interesting. Rough in its construction and banded with iron, the mortal box would be impossible to open without solving its word lock. And judging by the marks on the face of the chest, others had learned that lesson after much difficulty. Word lock chests. Gora scanned the runes embossed on the mortal clue plate. It's text their only hope of opening the diff difficult ward lock. Because Gorath can read Moradol, he can de decipher this. If you can't read Moradol, if you are playing as characters who do not know how to, you cannot read the runes, you will not know how to open this. Uh, there is a spell you can get that allows you to read it, but um, that means having to spend energy, and that would mean like putting a bookmark down, opening the thing, reading all the letters, figuring all this stuff out, then reloading your bookmark so you're not spending the the whatever, and now and now having to spin this again. So, uh, and then being like, I think I have to go this many clicks to get from the D to the whatever, right? That kind of thing. So I have three things I can spin. Uh, Prince Arutha from the, his lofty perch will find her troops without a search. His men will fall his castle too, and then we'll want, then what will Prince Arutha do? So the options are D A F S O R E I and C E W N. The solution is die. The chest thumped. Satisfy the magical locks of release. Owen tipped open the large wooden lid. You could technically learn what all the ruins mean, I believe, because they all map one to one um, to to uh, uh, English. Um, but it's easier just to open the Windows help file that comes with the copy of the game and uh, and go into the back where all the answers are. <laughs> when they made when they made the CD version of this that comes with that comes with Windows, uh, there is a. Um, the Windows help file that runs in like Windows 3.1 and Windows 95, the entire answers to all of the questions to every box uh, were just in the help file to be like, here's how you, here's, you're looking for, where are you in the game? I'm about here. Okay, cool. Here's the, here's the, the chess in this area. Great. Then you click that and it gives you the answer. So I was like, that's, that's good. All right. So what have, what do we got going on here? I'm going to put uh, from here, I'm going to go to that to uh, do this as well. And uh, I'm going to take off his crappy armor. Oh, wait, no, you have to swap it. That's right. I'm going to go over here. Now, it resorts your inventory, which is kind of nice. That's a, that's pleasant. Um, nice sword. Yeah, agreed. And we don't need to worry about anything else. My understanding is that anything you put in a chest, especially a word lock chest, the word lock chests are safer, but you can still get stuff stolen out of them. So if you put something, and I just what I remember reading from somewhere, it's like, if you put things in a chest to keep them for safekeeping, of course, most people in the game 
who live in, in Midkemia don't know how to read Moradol, so they'll have no idea how to break into the box, and so your stuff will be safe. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, whatever you've put into the into the chest is is completely safe. It might go missing. And it might just be in later chapters, it might go missing or something else. So there's this sense of I have real I have a lot of money. Do I use that money to buy really good armor and swords and stuff and then put that in a chest for some people so that when they show up later, they can be like, oh sweet, I'll just I'll go over to that chest, I'll open it up and put the nice stuff in my body. That's a thing to do. Um because sometimes when you when you start later in the game, I think there's a certain chapter where you where you don't uh, you can't actually get back your um, your money right away. You get your money a lot later. That's right. We we haven't had our first combat yet. I've been too busy lock picking and doing other things. The more important stuff. Aha. Okay. All right, we're supposed to discover this pretty fast. Someone was calling, recognizing the lilt of the young voice. Owen turned and looked back down the road. A young squire that he had met at a party in Yabin was trudging behind them, a pack full of scrolls slung over his shoulder. The squire raved congenially, and Owen echoed the motion. What do you think you're doing? We were trying to remain unnoticed. Damn. Locklear muttered under his breath. Try to behave as normally as possible. Since you know him, you handle him, Owen. Remember, Gorat's name is... Thorgath. Owen finished, irritated. I'm not a child, you know. Locklear whispered, that remains to be seen. Owen, I didn't expect to see you again quite so soon. I would have thought you were all the way to Lamut by now. Squire Philip. Would have been if the Duchess hadn't insisted on introducing me to all her daughters. Amelia was the prettiest, I believe, though I think Catherine took quite a liking to you. Catherine took a liking to everyone at the party. She's as fickle as her mother. She'll likely marry a condoin if she can find one knot tied in the marital knot. True enough. Say, I thought you said you were from Ty Tiburn. Why are you taking this route home? Kind of a long way around, isn't it? Well, yes, but I had to meet up with my uncle Locklear here, and my other friend here is an elf, uh, Thorgath. They decided it would be nice for me to take a tour with them down to Cro Hawks Hollow. Down to Hawks Hollow. I hear it's lovely at this time of year. What are you up to? I'm looking to cash in reward, actually. When I was on my way up to Yavin last month, I found a chest in this area, but I couldn't pick the lock on this thing. I figured it wasn't meant to be, and I let it off. Thing is, all through the Duchess' party, I couldn't help but think about it. I had chests on the brain. I don't really care what's in it, but I have to pick that lock. All right, well, let's ask about things nearest town. I'm afraid my sense of direction and distance are a bit off right now. We all had a bit to drink last night. We're still trying to shake off the effects. Which way is the nearest place we can get cleaned up? Must have been quite a bender if you're that confused. Head straight south along the main road, and that'll take you on to Lamut. If you're looking for good food, the Blue Wheel is a solid wager. Though I warn you, their Tsurani food can be a bit spicy. The Tsurani are a race of people that you fought the Rift War with. This happens after the Rift War. Um... There is a four, four book, uh, uh, I guess quadrilogy, but there's a four book set of novels uh, that take place in, in um, uh, the other side of the rift where the Tsurani live, and they're I think my favorite of the of the Rift War uh, series of this whole of the whole Feist thing. Feist actually wrote co-wrote them with uh, with another author, and they did a great job. They were really good because they're it's very. The Tsurani are very um, Asian-inspired. It's very Legend of the Five Rings feeling kind of thing. And holy crap, they get into the, the idea of... Um, uh, they get into the whole thing of like how you act at court and showing face and like all those kind of things. And I was like, how are... You know, how's a white author going to take this on and be able to do it? But really the two of them working together did a really good job of kind of representing the things that I learned about in, in my Japanese language and history and culture classes. And I was just like, wow, Jenny Wirtz, that's her name. Thank you. And I was just like, uh, I was like, this is actually really good. It's, it feels very believable for the things we were taught about, like the Heian period and stuff and how you have to act and all these, and how nobles have to act and all this, all that stuff. So it was really good. All right. And inns, I could, I for one could do with a little less sleeping on the ground. Any good inns you, that you can recommend? There's the Blue Wheel Inn in Lamont, or you might try the Dusty Dwarf in Hawks Hollow. I suppose if you really got desperate, you could try breaking into one of the abandoned houses out in that part of the country, but I can't sleep well in a house that may fall on top of me. Of course, it may well be that people have moved out for good reasons. I've heard that several people south of L'Oreal moved out after contagion began spreading near there. Oh, that's good. Good to know. And empty houses. Anything left behind in any of the abandoned houses you saw? Nothing of real value. Bits of food in a few cupboards, an occasional gold piece can be beneath the foundation of the house. Lost items, mainly. 
The majority of places I visited had those unpickable locks. What are they called? Weber locks. Yes, they had the Weber locks installed, and so I wasn't able to get inside. Lost items. I'm not certain, but I think I may have mislaid a very valuable belonging of mine. Shouldn't worry about it. Depending on where you lost it, the chances are good it will still be there. That, I think, is meant to be a thing to tell you that if you leave something on the ground, uh, it will probably remain in that same place throughout the game for the most part. Jenny words? Jenny words. Okay, thank you. Um, and it's only three books, is it? Man, it felt like four, but yeah, three books. Anyway, um, are we calling trilogies any number of books now, I guess, maybe? But it there are certain points, apparently, where stuff you leave on the ground will get cleaned up by the game, I think, at some point, because people come along and pick stuff up. Put things in chests. They tend to get written into your save files as being something is in this chest that, that you had put there. But also at certain points, the game cleans that stuff out too, and it's just um, it's just kind of assumed that somebody came along, opened the chest, and stole it. Or didn't steal it, they took it. Like, we've been taking stuff out of chests. It's one of those frustrating things where it's like, we didn't get to see Squire Philip on the route anywhere. Like, if I turn around, he ain't there. I don't get to talk to him again. So it's like, all right, I guess we, we move on. We move south. There is a spell in the game that will, uh, when you cast it, will alert you to where um, uh, hidden stuff is. I don't know where everything is in the game. I just remember sometimes walking around the earlier parts of the game and seeing stuff. Ha <laughs> ha! That's good too. Here, when you carry that, I'll carry that. Not bad. And so this is a shell. Shades of blue and alabaster chase one another around the surface of the spiral shell, winding tighter and tighter until the colors became an indistinguishable blur towards the center. While such shells are not entirely unique, they were sometimes collected and sold by poor peasants. Yes, these are things I can I can just sell. There's a lot of stuff in the game you can just sell. Sometimes there are multiple chests in, a, in some areas too, so it's worth looking out for that. And I have to say, like, on, four, on a 46, this game, like, flew. Sometimes it's... Oh, yeah, okay. Here's Lamute. The path turned. Locklear studied the road before them, saw it slither into the distance like a giant snake before descending eventually into a large town. Lamute, Koroth said. Think we should go in for supplies? Yes. Pretty much every town is its own theme. Lamute, in many ways, the town looked like something created on an alcoholic binge. Rude dwarven shacks smashed up against delicate elven shops, while weird surrounding taverns grew from oppressive kingdom-style dwellings. Again, very D&D &D feeling. A sign outside the city gate had summed it up well. All who visit Lamute are equal for all... For in Lamute, all is equally queer. So we tab through stuff. We can go to the inn. We can go to the shop. We can go, we can enter a thing. We can also search here. Not bad. And now that we're here, gonna turn on barding. I think it's gonna take out, yeah, Owen's got the highest barding, so that's probably what's gonna happen here. We're gonna go to the inn. Here's the blue wheel in. And our choices are talk, talk, exit, barmaid, and that. Uh, we're first gonna bard. Owen oh, struggled with the loot. <laughs> I hope you're reading this yourself, because I just like to listen to it. You get this clerk out, isn't in the worst mood, but give them time to calm down, and then you can come back, but only if you're coming back for food. So, why is that important? 
Uh, as you bard, you are getting better at barding, right? Haven't done that yet. But as you bard, you get better at it, and then you can earn money. People will give you money for your skills. We're going to turn on haggling. I guess I'm good at haggling. That's nice. We're going to go into the shop. Fletcher's Post. The Fletcher's Post had been constructed with elven sensibilities. Within and without, little if anything had been used in a manner that could be called scurrilous, and certainly nothing was merely decorative. Along the walls, the shop's array of arrows and other archery goods were finally displayed, and each thing seemed precisely in its place. So I can get stuff repaired, I can buy and sell, I can exit. Buy and sell. So this is the prize. We buy one of these, use it till it breaks, and then we come back and we trade that stuff in. But also what you can do is you can do the same drop tricks you do with quarrels. So I'll explain what all this stuff does. A broadsword, sword, right? Light crossbows are good. Surrounding light crossbows are even lighter and even better. You can generally tell if it costs more money. It means that it's actually a uh, it, it's a it's a better um, it's a better weapon. And then the elven crossbows, of course, are the the best ones that are available. I think in the game currently. I think there's uh, heavy crossbows come after this, uh, or specific types of heavy crossbows. Uh, there's the best one in the game is called the Bessie Mauler, but you have to be a really good um, you have to be really good at archery to use it. Because otherwise, uh, the fact that it's such a heavy crossbow and shoots uh, with so much power that your accuracy can go to shit. So you have to have really good accuracy. Quarrels being arrows. Elven quarrels, of course, being better arrows, as you can see. Sirani quarrels are the midpoint between those. Uh, the standing kingdom armor at 100%, so that's good. Heavy bowstrings for heavy crossbows. Light bowstrings for light crossbows. Your torches are torches. Aventurine. This repairs crossbows, and if I if I enable my weapon craft, if I concentrate a weapon craft when I use this on a crossbow, it will um, it will contribute to upping my uh, my weapon craft as well. So yeah, basically, it's just a nice resin to use on your uh, on your bowstrings. It keeps them together, refreshes your bowstring a bit. You're gonna you'll find that a lot of things in the game um, are meant to uh, are meant to like. Uh, provide repairs for a brief period of time. So we have weed walkers, which uh, this improve whoever's wearing these, uh, it improves their stealth. Um, Caleb's dialectic. Uh, it's hard to sometimes determine what some of these things do because you have to really get a sense of what's going on here. So the book looked and smelled quite new. Gareth turned to the onion skin covered title page and discovered a dedication written there. This is a copy of a work ascribed in the third year of the reign of King Liam I for Brother Boshane, Archer and Friend. So this is our hint that this is probably improves our archery. And then the scroll. Ah, Eyes of Ishap. Good spell. I'll probably maybe find it in a box somewhere, in fact. Uh, for, it seems reasonably com a common thing. And it's expensive too. I can't afford to buy any, any of it yet. So where we're at right now, can't afford to buy anything. Um, can I sell you restoratives? No, I have to find a different person to sell these things to. And it is an archery post. So yeah, you would generally make sense. Now repairing. Um, the shopkeeper whistled, cringing at the sound, locked their glance up to see what the bargain the keeper wished to call her attention to, but instead seeing the man was calling to someone else. I didn't mean to startle you, the man said, just trying to find if my mender is still about today. You have a tinker in your employ, Locklear asked. Sometimes when he chooses to show up, the shopkeeper said amiably he, amiably, he repairs crossbows. You'd think his work was brand new. Would you like to speak to him? Yes. The shopkeeper fetched the mender. You want me to look over a few of your things? The tinker asked. What do you have in mind for me to repair? Now, I can give him stuff, and I believe he'll actually tell me how much it's going to cost. Ah, so he can't do armor. He can't do swords, I don't think. No. And anything you click on, he'll look at it and be like, I do repair things, but this is a little of my experience. Probably do more harm than good. Sorry. He's looking for crossbows. We don't do crossbows. We don't have any crossbows on, so we can't do anything here. And like I said, there's nothing else to do but leave. So what else is here? In shop, enter. We'll enter. The garrison was impressive. Sitting high on a hill overlooking Lamut, the military outpost had been constructed years earlier to head off a possible mortal assault on the western border of the kingdom. They followed a road that snaked up through, uh, through town and up the rocky hill 
upon which the garrison sat. After speaking with the sentries at the gate, they were led under the fortress's massive iron portcullis. Captain Belford stood as they entered the room. It's good to see you once again, Locklear, he said, extending his hand. I share that sentiment. What news have you? How is Earl Kasumi? Locklear asked as the men shook hands. They sat in hard wooden chairs as Belford replied. He's well, but he's off taking care of some business with a few new guards to come through the rift from Kelowan. That's the name of the other side, Kelowan. As for the rest of us, we're looking for a group of gray warriors from Kelowan who slipped through the rift just before it closed. So, by the way, spoilers for pretty much the first half of the rift war uh, cycle. All sorts of stuff is gonna, you'd be like, oh, if I go read the books now, I'm gonna be spoiled. And yes, you're gonna be spoiled on things. It's just what's gonna happen. Sorry. Locklear looked a little puzzled. King Liam and Emperor Inchin Ichindar granted the Grey Warriors freedom and new status in the kingdom. Yes, but the agreement doesn't allow for the nationalization of stolen goods, seeing they may have absconded with a valuable ruby from Makala's entourage, said Belford. Makala, the Tsurani Great One, Owen asked. Bedford smiled. Yes, he has been talking to Prince Arutha about establishing a permanent rift to encourage trade between the kingdom and Kelowan. He's really throwing his weight around trying to get his ruby back. If you should happen to come across it, bring it back here. He's offering a, re a reward. They thanked him for his information and left. So this is a side quest. There's nowhere to write it down. We just have to know it's a side quest. Um, but yeah, there's a valuable ruby. And if we find it, we can come back here and give it to them and maybe get a reward for it. Let's go to the inn again. Probably can't bard anymore. Uh, let's see. Let's talk. Let's... Okay. Sometimes it's weird because the arrows mean one thing. Um, it's not always clear what everything means. The man scowled, apparently far more intent on something going across the common room. He seemed uninterested in Locklear's repeated attempt to chat. At last, he glanced up and gave an exasperated sigh. What exactly do you want? Just a little friendly talk, Locklear said, with a companionable smile. News? Gossip? A song, perhaps? Well, go and find a bloody jongler, then, and leave me alone. Jonglers are entertainers. I've got better things to do than entertain every jackaboot that comes through that door. So, not getting to go anywhere. Barmaid is a store. Probably can't sell her anything. Don't think so. Acts as a shopkeeper, though. Um, but yeah, her thing sells rations. Uh, Quiggy and Brandy, which is fermented in the vineyards of the Dauphinus of Quig. Uh, the brandy was classically smooth, lacking the bitterness of some of the vintages grown in the kingdom. Uh, Quig, I believe, is... In, it's in our realm, it's in Midkenia, but it's another country or kingdom across the, the, the water. And then ale. Contents of the cup were typical of the ale found in most of the kingdom. Dark brown mixture with a seedy scum floating on the surface. All in all, not the best of drinks, but one that could induce a mellower outlook when life grew too stressful. So apparently if you drink uh, alcohol, I didn't know this. We didn't know this when we originally played the game because a lot of these things aren't really spelled out in the manual. Or at least not in the parts of the manual we read. If you have an herbal pack and you sleep, you can get over a lot of uh, maladies. Ale and brandy and other things can also help you get over some maladies as well when you sleep, but you have to sleep in an inn in order to use them, so it's kind of a substitute for that. Uh, talk to this dude. The dwarf drew on his pipe. Languid smoke plumed from the old codger's mouth as he studied Locklear, Owen, and Grath each in turn. Although he had long ago lost the use of his left eye to a mortal sword stroke, his right eye still burned brightly beneath his bushy eyebrows. So, when we talk to people, we're supposed to get their voices, and we haven't been, so I'm gonna have to do some of that sound driver playing with uh, over the next couple days to see if I can get that to happen. Um, there's an easy way to test it, apparently, too, so I'll, so I'll see what we can do. Dubal on lock. Being as a dwarf ne'er forgets... Oh, God. Being as a dwarf ne'er forgets as much as his own name. I cannot recognize a strapping young man before me who was last saw, well, who at last I saw was a boy. No slight intended, but I fear I don't recall the occasion, said Locklear. As like the rest of your human kin, none among you can remember much past a week, if not for weak canny dwarves. You would have forgotten that you have a kingdom at all. I fetched you out of a cellar along with a score of women folk at the Battle of Sethanon. Don't you remember me, Locky? Dubal, of course! Glad to see you. I hadn't recognized you without the eye patch. Ah, what's a dwarf to do? I won this scratch fair and square, and I'll be a dragon's mother before I'll cover it up again. Shouldn't have done so in the first place. Now I just sit here to jabber with that loon of a Tsurani bartender and have me a few beers. Not much to do with a Macmordain Cadal all collapsed. A Brachner has been seen down there. 
they'll be offering a hefty reward for this. It's slaying a mighty of tradition holds too. Something of a challenge as they are fierce beasties, even by dwarven standards. I've heard tales of these creatures of stone. Thank you, Dubal. Definitely told us a lot about what's going on there. If I talk to him again... Oh, no, he's done. He doesn't want to talk to us anymore. Uh, I can read that out. The dwarf frowned at them, apparently resolute not to move from his stool for some time. He puffed hardly in his pipe. If you'd be ever so kind, I'd prefer it if you'd let me unpester a dwarf's pipe as a religious matter in a tavern his temple. Perhaps we can jabber a bit later. Cool. Talk to the Tsurani bartender. Sumani clapped twice. Abruptly, the festive mood of the room died. The clank of goblets and the scrape of plates falling silent as the bartender shuffled between benches to bow at Locklear's feet. Touching a gnarled fist to his forehead and then to his heart, he spoke somberly. Yeah, no voice. Sumani, be welcome to the Blue Wheel Inn. May you find the drinks to your liking and the company of our patrons pleasurable. If there is anything our servants or I may do, you need only ask Sumani. Ah, honors to your house as well, Sumani. Am I correct in believing this a drinking establishment? So it is. We've served many of your Midkinian drinks as well as a few from the Tsura... Ah, uh, this is always hard for me. Tsura Nuani Empire as well. Perhaps I might interest you in a cup of chocha. Talk to me about you. Why did you decide to come to Mctini and open it in anyway? Surely you'd get better business on Kelawan. I was not always a tavern keeper. As a soldier serving House Shinzawai under Earl Kasumi, I was trapped here when the Rift Gate was collapsed at the end of the Rift War. Spoilers. It was our belief that we'd never again see our families in Tsura Nuani or the green skies of Kelawan again. But Tsurani warriors traditionally kill themselves if they are in danger of falling captive to an enemy. This is true, Lord, but the Earl informed us that we were forbidden to dispatch ourselves until giving leave to do so by a great one. I believe in Midkini you would call such a one a magician. Until such a time, I content myself with running the Blue Wheel Inn. All right, Rift Gates. I've heard that the permanent Rift Gate to Kelowan is located near here. I was hoping we could get a glimpse of it. There would be little to see at the moment. An internal conflict has arisen in the Empire between House Sakoma and House Anasati. The Assembly Magicians have ordered a temporary interruption of transport between the Empire and the Kingdom of the Isles until such time the conflict is resolved. We are the Kingdom of the Isles, by the way. Uh, I've been assured the measure is temporary. Combat? You said you were a soldier with the Tsurani forces. Would you be interested in teaching us some of your combat techniques? It would be my honor, Lord, but I require a small fee for my services. My armor to be damaged, I would be ill-prepared otherwise to pay for its repair. 75 sovereigns to cover any potential harm. Is this fee acceptable? Uh, no, we don't have that. You're asking a bit more than I had in mind. How much can it cost to repair armor? My armor is Tsurani, and more specifically, I would require someone of the house Shinzoi to repair it. It is the way of my world. Armor repair. I don't know how much longer our armor is going to last. Any idea where we could get it repaired? If your armor was the same as mine, I would suggest trying the garrison, but kingdom armor is made in a different way. I would think perhaps the dwarves in the Makmordin Kadal would be of assistance. That's the mine. Uh, I understand from speaking to du Dubal that these small ones are gifted when it comes to the manufacture of, of weapons and armor. Ray Warriors. Ah, Pixel Art Dragon asked earlier, wait, what, there were voices? There were a, there was a single voice sound effect. Somebody would stand up and say, like, a line to us. They would basically just be like, oh, nice to see you, or like that kind of thing. Um, so when you have music playing, it won't... Uh, play the voices. So I could turn the music off altogether and then we'd, we would be able to at least get the voices out of it, but I didn't want to turn the music off and it's weird because people have said like you never get the voices when you have the CD audio running and I'm like no, I'm sure, I'm sure we got the voices when the CD audio was running. I'm sure of that because I remember that from back in the day, but maybe I'm wrong? Anyway. We were up at the garrison earlier, and they told us that a group of Grey Warriors stole a pair of rubies. Are the Grey Warriors some kind of special armed force in Kelowan? Special, yes, but not in the way you imagine. The Grey Warriors are men without honor, men whose houses have been destroyed by an opponent house. Such men must live off the land until they die, though I've heard that Mara of the Akoma has accepted many such men into her estate. Others have learned they may be granted freedom if they can reach the kingdom. Many die trying. Where would such men go once they got here? Away from Lamut, wherever they might go. Though the members of the garrison here are bound by kingdom law, many of the soldiers still live by Tsurani custom as I do. It's not easy to fight our feelings about the Grey Ones. If indeed these Grey Warriors have stolen rubies, I su suggest you seek out a man with a tainted honor. Kiefer Ailes Cook, Cook? Kiefer Ailes Cook in the town of L'Oreal. He's a gem merchant there out of his home. Thefts? I get the feeling this ruby theft isn't an isolated incident. 
Listen between my words. This is the sixth such theft in the past year. Twice gems have been stolen near the Assembly of Magicians from Great One Makala's entourage. That would be no simple feat to accomplish even for a master thief. Whoever it is is responsible, or that is responsible, he must fear little if he doesn't fear the wrath of a Great One. I would take care of following this thief, friend, he, since he is very dangerous. So lots of stuff set up for us now. So, yeah. Ah, okay, so Arclight says the CD audio should allow for voices. So maybe I'll turn the CD audio back on, and we'll see what happens. Goodbye. Thanks for your services, Sumani. You have a wonderful establishment. It's very Tsurani. Your patronage honors us. Goodbye. I promise if ever in Lamut again, I'll be sure to drop in for a bit of something to eat. Now, we don't need to in. Because it costs us money. The Night Master looked tired. Five sovereigns for the night. It's chamber pot in the corner. And so basically you sleep from whatever time it is to that dot there, uh, no matter what happens. And no, we're not going to stay here for the night because we're completely fine. Another time, that master, a bit of advice ever. You want more customers advise dropping your prices. Even the Empress of Cash would balk at what you're asking. Five whole sovereigns. Shouldn't work again, I don't think. Oh, it will. Oh, well. I did at one point want to learn how to play this on my guitar, though I know it's probably more complicated than I would learn how to how to play. So let's, uh, we have done everything we need to do here. There's nothing in that stash. We will exit. And... So when you bard, everybody's ability goes up. It's not just the one person who who, who practices. When it says the party, I have a feeling it probably meant more that, um, there we go. He got better. He got to listen to somebody play, got to listen to Owen play, who is 41% good at this, and was like, oh, music! I like to think of Gorath as a modern equivalent. Think of what, like, Drax is like a little bit. <laughs> but anyway... Put a bookmark down. And it is almost 10. Uh do I take the do I take it early? I mean we're stopped and we haven't moved yet, but um and it spits us to the outside of the town. So we did talk about going to Hawks Hollow. There's Zun. There's Hawks Hollow. There's L'Oreal. Now we were also told that in in uh there were some places south of Hawks Hollow or south of L'Oreal, that had a plague on, so we have to be cautious of that too. So maybe what we'll do is we'll go down to Zoon, uh, and we'll 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 seek our way around maybe Hawks Hollow and and go up to L'Oreal and try to avoid places that are um, uh, uh, that are plagued. I uh, have to be cautious of you know plague, and maybe we'll even run all the way up to Tearsog as a result. The idea that I wanted to do here was to just to find a place to trade in some stuff. Like, find a shop where I can trade in all my restoratives, get a lot of money, um, and then start the process of working our way backwards. And what I did when I did this before, when I was playing on my own, is I went all the way down to about Sarth. Because in the first chapter, if you get within this distance, like, fairly close to Krondor, you're like, hooray, it's Krondor! And and you just barrel on in. And, um, and then you're in Krondor. And that's, like, the end of chapter one. And so what I've been trying to do or what i want to do with this game is um is play as much of like the getting down to doing some, maybe making it all the way to sarth and then doubling back uh not going in here because I, this is like essentially chapter seven this is like a really hard area of the game but um working our way kind of back along maybe not along this route per se because i don't think we can go to we shouldn't probably go to eggly or tanners maybe it's worth going there but the idea is to kind of work our way along this. Don't go north. Armengar is probably not that big a problem, but but stay along Tearsog. Move along here. 
uh, move all along close to North Warden. Um, and then, because I believe uh, North Warden and Armengar are forts on the edge of our empire, and anything north of this is not for us to go to. Uh, this is, this is, these are the Northlands up here. So I might not be able to get to Armengar. Um, and then come down this way through like Kenting Rush, Cavill Keep, Prank Stone, Romney, Sloop, uh, Sildan, Lighten, uh, Mount's Cross, Darkmoor, maybe make my way back up and go to Sethanon. Uh, try to cover as much as I can and in the process really like buff ourselves out. Uh, we'll probably do that. Um, it might be, will be the rest of this stream because I'm kind of just like exploring and like, and we're goofing a little bit here. Uh, but when we lean into it more uh, to try to play a little bit more, I, my idea is to kind of work our way along here and, and really like build up more money and, and do those kind of things instead. Uh, one of the, one of the easier ways I've found apparently to make money too, is you find some silver thorn, which is poison, uh, cause you find silver thorn berries. You get a whole bunch of, uh, arrows, you poison the arrows and then sell the arrows, uh, as, as you sell poisoned arrows back to the stores and the stores are like sweet poisoned arrows. Those will be worth a lot. And so you make more money off of that. You do that a few times, buy some elven corals poison those, sell those back. Now you begin the process of, of doing that and actually end up making reasonably good money. Also finding and, and selling and repairing stuff, uh, as, as, um, uh, as, as you go as well. Cause that's just a thing you do in video games, right? I guess Crydy isn't on here anywhere. It's interesting. You mentioned Kumatsu brings up Crydy. I'm like, right, Crydy, that was important in the earlier games. So, uh, what time is it? It is midday. And we will go back to the main. Now, there is a dude who's going to attack us, I think, uh, south of Lamut. Uh, first, let's go behind. I always walk behind mountains because people like to hide stuff behind. You know what I'm going to do? Drop a save. Uh, we're going to call it O2. And we're not done here yet. Preferences. Turn the CD music back on. Yeah, they went hard on the audio. The problem is it might not be easy to hear the voices and stuff, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so what I'm going to do... We, we put a save down. I'm going to go into, I think this essentially pauses the game. Uh, yep, that should be good for the time being. And I'm going to uh, fly out of here. And we're going to quickly take a commercial break because it is 10 o'clock. And I'll see you guys in about three minutes. There's nothing to pick at this point, so I can't do any more lock picking. But um, I guess if we went looking for a box, I could probably do that. But for the time being... Uh, this is, this is what we're going to do, uh, back in a moment. There we go. And I can hear myself in my headphones, which means you can probably hear me too. Hello. We continue playing. You can't, you can't see Locklear, which is too bad, uh, for most of this thing, but you can, I mean, you've been able to see Locklear when he comes up in the in the things he's just like a dude with well i mean he can if i exit here and i do this there he is i don't know if they use the same picture for ah they did okay yeah it would be kind of weird to have multiple pictures so we want to go south of here Sometimes you just can't walk through a, a beautiful place because it is all messed up. Wait, which way am I going? Oh, I'm going... Yeah, okay, that's good. We are... All right, that's fine. I think this is the road that leads to the Macmordian Canal. Nope, that is Lamut's road. Turned around. Okay. 
Oh, do you see that? This is this is like what first person shooters were like back in the day. Ah. Uh -huh. I gotta get that stealth up. They agreed to attack, going over their plans as quickly as possible. Locklear laid out a simple strategy. We're set then. Let's just hope our, advan our advance is undetected or our advantage will be lost. And I think that's good enough to qualify for stealth. We want to turn on that and turn on accuracy melee because we're probably not going to crossbow any. Well, we can't crossbow anybody yet. Uh, we'll turn on casting as well. God, willing this works out. Yeah. The mortal warrior grinned, sidestepping their surprise attack. To try to gain the higher ground, he waggled a mocking forefinger at Locklear, his eyes alight with blood eagerness. Fine, Locklear said, preparing for battle. Then we shall do this the hard way. All right, so this is how it works. I can only move four of any in any direction. Probably what I want to do is... I don't want to be me. But Owen gets to go first. Let's see. That's auto battle. We don't want to do that. That's defend. That's run. That is... I'm never quite sure. I think this is rest. Uh, I think what I want to do with Owen... It's going to change me back to Owen? It's not. Oh, so I just basically passed everybody's turns. Cool. That's good. What do you have for spells, Owen? Despair thy eyes? Spare thy eyes. It blinds the target, cost me two stamina. I have no idea if this guy's blinded or not. I'm just taking it for granted. He hadn't moved. Battle was won. Search the body for supplies, Locklear suggested, then amended to make it quick. If there are more waiting out there, let's not be here when they return. Body. Let's check the corp. Corp. Corpse. No sense being squeamish. So, some... Some royals. Like that. Important to grab lots of things. So we can hopefully repair them later. It's getting dark. There's another chest. In the, in the early parts of the game, it, they tend to be easy to find. All right, pick that lock. Owen, I have a better set of armor for you. And I'm going to give you that to carry. And torches, maybe? Ah, oh, shit, I don't know. I guess. Throw some of those away soon enough. Uh, let's see here. He still has a lot, so let's give him six. Give him six. That's fine. Nothing in the box. Lockpick went up again. Didn't even have it checked. Uh, maybe we'll just leave that on for the time being. Where's this going? Oh, that's the that's the Macmurdian Cadal. It is dark. Let us sleep till morning. The sulfur stench was in the wind. This must be the Macmordain Canal, Locklear said, his eyes glazing as he lost his open thought. I knew it was somewhere close. As I recall, Mach is dwarven for mine or cave or something like that. Now, considering the dwarves are no friends of the mortal, they might be of some assistance to us, assuming they don't take exception to Gorath here. Do we investigate or not? <sighs> yeah, okay, let's just go in for a bit. Uh, the tunnels were damp, though the silver seamed earthen roof which stretched over their head was tall enough they didn't have to crouch. Locklear felt hemmed in by the shaft. He was privately thankful the doors were larger than they were given given credit for in the legends. Light a torch on fire.
Sparks rocketed down the corridor, slamming Owen flat against the mineshaft walls. Locklear narrowly left to recover himself as something skidded across the, along the rocky floor. Abruptly, the glowing cone of fire winked out of existence as it collided with an unseen wall. After several long heartbeats, the seigneur peeled himself away from the wall just in time to meet the gaze of a short tree stump of a man. Natterbandok. Bloody awful hammer. You'd best have a demon in your bones. You have come to take a whack and kill the beast, have you not? Yeah, he didn't say anything, so I'm not sure why that's not really working the way I expected to. Beastie? Beastie, aye! Half a week ago, we heard something fierce a bane in the mine, terrible cold-like. Of course, a dwarf knows the sound instant whether he's heard it before or not. Rock nur Nurr. Curse of every whole delver since the first dwarves took up hammers. I've never heard of them. No one has quite well, laddie. Hasn't been a black nur in the upper mines for well on since DeLong the Great laid claim to the Kingdom of the Isles. We thought we'd lay low the lot of them, but the kobolds are stirring them up on their quest. Kobolds? Your folk call them gnomes. So, they used to worship a dragon what lived down here, but when the dragon disappeared, they thought the dwarven folk hit him away. Every now and then, their leader, Fadir, takes a notion to undertake a holy quest to find him. This time they must have woke up a clutch of rock nerve. Now the nerve collapsed them in passage and killed 30 of our kin. We have a reward to whomever can do it in if you're of a mind and have the spirit that is. This is not something I can be able to do here, I think. But let's talk. I'm not interested in we're interested in killing your rock nerve. But if we were looking for it. It's aliens, right? Half again your height and a made of stone and like living rock they are. From out of their nostrils they breathe a green mist, but I'd be wary of getting too lo close to look for they'll drop a boulder on your head, sure enough. We've already had a few bravos what come in to try a hand at killing the beastie, but there's not much they've been able to do themselves beyond get themselves so mangled they need the help of a temple. I'd be as wary of them as though as I would be of the beastie. They, none of them, want else but them to claim the gold that we've offered to the uh, creature slayer. Temples... The way things have been going for us recently, perhaps we would do well to seek a little help with the temples as well. Where are the closest ones? We dwarves don't much dawdle outside the great towers of Stone Mountain. But as I can, there's a temple of Killian betwixt Zun and Hawk's Hollow. I think there might also might be a temple of Ishap here close, but I can't re recall exact where that would be. Armor repair. The barkeep of the Blue Wheel Inn that Lamut suggested you might be able to repair our armor. If we weren't digging ourselves out of this pretty mess, I, we could do something for you, but we're all tied up to a man. Pardon my saying so, but we've problems a bit more pressing than dealing with dented armor. You might have tried a hermit what lives near Oxalo. He's gained something of a reputation for himself over the past few years. So again, we're seeing everything in the early part of the game, just the, the glimpses of, like, you're going to get to do a little of this, a little of that. Swords. If you can't repair our armor, do you think, at least think you can do something about our swords? I hate to be difficult, but we're really in a crucial situation. Are you deep, laddie? I told you before, we haven't the time to go repairing things at the moment. We're in a crucial situation ourselves. you haven't noticed, we would be willing to pay you. I'm sure you would. Just as sure as I know, the dwarves below would be willing to pay to get out from under the rock. It's a question of time. Time. But look, if I show you a trick to sharpening your swords, will you promise not to be bothering anyone else in the mine? I think you can turn a handful of sovereigns to advantage in Lamut and hire a few strong backs. You have my word of honor. Fuck no. That shall have to do. I'll teach you quick a little about weapon crafting, but I expect a fee of 50 sovereigns for my trouble. Do we have a deal? Trouble. I like that. For my trouble. Do we have a deal? No. Didn't really have a lesson in mind at the moment. We'll see if we can't find someone else to sharpen our swords for us. Whatever you like. We both have things to do. Goodbye. Thank you for your time. Nadir, I hope you can get things straightened out down here. It'll be fine. As soon as we're through some of this rock and the Brachnur is laid low, you cannot keep us down. Didn't think so. Perhaps we'll meet again. All right. Is that a pit? It's not a pit. He said as he walked through the pit. Pits are a little more obvious, I think. What What the hell do I know? It's been a while since I played this game. All right, so standard maze finding. Oh, right, if you hold down, it will auto-turn you. Yes, we should. Okay. That's not an instant open. But we have a new lock to pick. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. 
I don't know if these are Weber locks or not. So, I mean, it's a different lock, right? And there's only so many different locks in the game. Yeah, the bookmark is a quick save, yes. Yeah, pits are a pain in the ass because you need ropes to cross them, and I think it's every time you cross a pit, you use a rope. You don't get your rope back. But I think... I can't remember if it hangs there so you can use it again. Oh, right. You're right. Unflag these things so it goes up faster. We can turn these off while we're at it. I don't think it's going to increase my lockpick skills because Owen's not the one holding the lockpicks. It's Locklear who's doing it, so... Um... There, let you guys listen to this. And we will dupe some rope if that's what it comes down to. I just have to, I would have to find a place to dupe the rope. It's interesting because I don't think you can stack bug on the characters because the characters, um, if you have, like, if you have one of something uh, and you drop another one on them, then it'll just add up to be two, right? So you have to stack bug a cache. Put a rope in the body and rope comes out. Yeah, Johnny, that's the stuff. I could try that at key. It would probably break. Yeah, it doesn't fit. But it didn't break, and that's good too. It is going up, so that's good. I haven't been breaking lockpicks recently, so that's good too. Which means that if I do want to try to train the other guys on picking locks, um, we can do that. Yeah, he doesn't say anything about what kind of lock it is or anything else. That's too bad. Oh, that one snapped a pick. All right. Uh, we can dupe anything that stacks. I think we could dupe keys if... The key was something that was, um, yeah, I think key stack. So we could dupe it. We have to have two of it. That was the issue. Yeah. And I think you can get keys from other places, but. See, so what's funny is that I have played through a bit of this game. So once you get through chapter one, uh, we're going to lose Locklear like right away. <laughs> but he does come back later in the game. Uh, because I think there's only six characters total in the game. There's uh, Locklear, Owen, Gorath, um, uh, Patris, Jimmy. I don't know if you get to play as Pug or not. I can't remember if that even comes up. I haven't actually, but I, I saw it. I was looking at the betrayal at Crondor Help Web, and I saw that it only showed six characters. I'm like, really? There's only different six characters you can play as? Really? But there are only so many, like, uh, fighters versus... Um, uh, versus uh, uh, magicians as well. And I think they always try to keep a magician in your party no matter what. It's What surprised me about this game is that this really felt like um, uh, when we were playing it, I was surprised like at the, the ration thing was something that surprised me, right? Because you, you, you play, um, when you play uh, games like uh, Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy, uh, and I, my first RPG was Dragon Quest. And so to play that and be like, walk around and do whatever, and you're going to need some money to pay for an inn. Yes, that those kind of things, the ba those basic kind of RPG ideas, you know, they made sense. And uh, played some other RPGs since then, but really the JRPG thing follows that specific, the JRPG things, that, the rules and stuff that you see out of that. So to play this and be like, so rations, we have rations, why do we have that? It's like, well... Rations are what we eat to stay alive. It's like, yeah, but why why do we have that? It's like, well, it has to go in your pack. It has to take up space. And then you start thinking about that, and you just come across spoiled rations in the game. You're like, oh, okay, well, I can eat those if I need sustenance, uh, but they are going to make me sick, so I have to, pre I have to prepare to, uh, to not... Um, I have to prepare to, like heal myself from being uh from yeah i'm no longer hungry but now i have to heal myself from like a sore stomach or you know uh a problem and and that's that's a you know it's like having to manage rations and having to like then what do i do with these things but it's a neat little extra game uh bit that's like you can only go so far from a town and wander around and do stuff because once you've been on the run for a certain amount of time you might eventually 
you know, run out of food. And I mean, I've played the D&D games and stuff I've played for a while. We never really get into, you know, everybody seems to have Lemba spread, right? Let's, let's, everybody seems to have some, like they're, they're fine. We've been, we've been walking through whatever for a couple days. We all seem to have food on us. It's, it's fine. We're all doing, we're all doing great. Keening sound. All right. 61%. Not bad. That's never going to go up for the other guys. So let's keep their things on. Because I'm probably going to have a fight here pretty quick. Testing defense. I don't remember that sound ever. Explore the whole room to find chests. Ah, word lock box. Yeah, always a good idea to save first, really, but yeah. All right. Round as an apple, deep as a cup. All the bitter sea can't fill it up. I bet it's wheel. It's not wheel. Bleal, sleal, allele. Round as an apple, deep as a cup. People are saying world. That is not. Your bee hole. You can't fill up your bee hole. Hmm. Yes, not shell. Like S A W B. It is not world. Because there's no R in there. Oh yeah, sieve. I was like, I know it's the riddles, right? So it's like, I know it's a thing. Good job, random trivia. So we have a shell and we have a book. Lorgan's journal, it's spine work, a patch of uh, spine and patchwork of cracked hide and shiny leather. New page of sandwich between the ancient sheaves of parchment. The book has been repaired numerous times in long history. Don't know why. All right. We are carrying so much stuff. So I'm full on things. Can't do much else in here. Like, as I find things and hurt them or kill them, I'm going to end up uh, unable to carry stuff out. So I'm just going to go back out. We're going to probably just go to Hawks Hollow and, and buy stuff, I think. 
Oh, we ran into him again, I guess. Yep, same thing happened again. Ah, uh, I don't know whether you're coming or going, lads, but if you're looking for a way through the, the Max Elvendar, you're out of luck. Fault me if you will for Kurd's sake, or call me a drunkard bull, but I've, I've as fast a hammer hand as any under these mountains. I cannot clear away several months of Brackner brewing in an eye blink, you know. Elvendar, you must to see. If Elvendar, you must to see, then come back in a month or so, and perhaps we have broke through. Or is there something else you were wanting? Ruarg's room. Who what is Ruarg and what is his chamber? I overheard someone talking about him. It? I don't... Where did we learn about... I guess I unlocked a box and that was... <clears throat> overheard my toes! You've been poking about, haven't you? No harm in it, though. Ruarg was a grand beastie, a dragon. For centuries he lived here in the Mac Mordain, but he passed on at last near ten years ago. I've heard our King Dolgan say the elven consort Tomas was present when Ruarg passed on. I'm scarce to believe it. The chamber's a marvel, though. Buried somewhere beyond where our digging is at the moment. At one time, there's quite a bit of treasure there, an unfortunate amount, large amount of it concealed in chests with mortal word locks, and perhaps there may still be. Come back later and mayhap we'll see it together. Word locks? A more bastardly lock never to have been crafted, not by dwarf nor man. It's got little wheels what a body turns, each representing a letter of the alphabet. In order to open the chest, you've got to make the letter spell to word what the locks designer had in mind to open it up. Most have a clue plate attached to the front of what uh, what's written in mortal, in case the lockmaker forgets the word. And of course... The clue plates of no use to the vast majority of kingdom folk. M written in bloody mortal. Goodbye. Leave you to your work, I suppose. Thanks one more for talking with us. I have a pleasure as well, but if you excuse me, so we'll certainly we'll be, on our, we will be on our way as well. Yeah, we can leave now. I gotta dump off a lot of this stuff. Clearly. And light like guided them, following the ascending shaft to the MacMordain Canal into daylight, they emerge at last on the road leading to the east in the King's Highway. Pop a save game now, for now. Nobody died inside the mine. We found some neat stuff. Just call that 03. And... We'll come back to the... Kadal. Uh, we'll come back to the Mac later. It is right about there. So we're almost near Zune as it is. Right, we can look at the journal, I guess. That's pretty much all there is, though, is like... I, oh, you can double-click it. Nice. A journal of an unknown dwarf. The majority of the pages in the book were concerned with a creature which the author referred to alternately as a Breknur, Braknur, and Braknur. Some mention was also made about a secret chamber in the lower chambers of the MacMordain Canal, which had once been occupied by someone named Ruarg. And there we go. As we spend a lot of time dicking around there, probably going to get to Zun. Oh, no, I guess I gotta sleep again. Sleep. Sleep. Ah. Breath stopped and stared into the distance. After several seconds of contemplation, he turned and began to speak. Look at that tree over there. The lower limbs have all been hacked off. That either means we're near someone's property line or someone's ensuring they had an obstructed view of the area. Continue in this direction, we should proceed with great caution. Normally that means that, that the stealth rating goes up, but I guess... And you're like, I was supposed to notice that? It's like, no. Ah, they're being watched. I'm sure where their observers were. Out comes a figure. This is an ambush situation, I think. We're supposed to see what happens when that happens. So, when you're too close to somebody, you can't... You can't do anything about attacking them. Like, Owen can't cast spells, so he's got to get clear. My choices are thrust... Now I can swing with the right mouse button or I can thrust with the left to get more damage out of this if I want to. Uh, but we will uh, thrust. And then I will use Despair Thy Eyes because it cost me next to nothing. And it's going to blind that dude, hopefully. We can kill this dude. If I blind him... Hopefully, if that works, we're not going to hear anything else about that. Rest. Rest again. Oh, he can attack now. So we probably want to... Spell casting again. actually change that's fine and there 
Okay, so it is a thing about not getting to hear everything when there's music because of the way the CD works. I would have to probably actually mount the CD uh, separately. Like, I'd have to rip the CD and then tell the game to refer to that to load it. It's just like, uh, oh, there's the grid. Oh, why did I do that? Good. He was alive! Unsure whether it was skill or luck that had won them the fight, Locklear set aside his weapon, though he allowed his dead opponent a wide berth while he checked on Gorat's welfare. He needed no further excitement for the day. Bodies! Oh, and look for supplies. Feeling a bit like a vulture, he turned the body this way and that. He's to search for anything that might be of use to them in their journey. All in all, he supposed that if he were the dead man, it wouldn't matter to him any longer what happened to his belongings. Ah, there's our whetstone. We are full of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some room. Copy that whetstone here. Or put it there. This is non-stackable. You can't um, you can't just drag a whetstone, like a piece of a whetstone to somewhere else. It's literally you use the whetstone to do what you're going to do. And so in this case, turn on weapon craft for Locky. He's going to polish some weapons. That is not the sound it should be making. That's really weird. It should be like a shh sound. Drag that on to him. So the way weapon craft works in this game is that when you when you try to do weapon craft, you have to have used the weapon at least once. And generally any sword that we find is, unless it's 100%, it's technically used. So still got some good weapons overall here. I uh, might uh, put that on him and see about how we do this. Okay, no one's got space available. So we're gonna copy, we're gonna move. The gating on my, the gating on the audio is a little weird. Uh, this is repairable. Okay, sorry, I should show you that. It says repairable, it has more info, so you can learn a bunch of stuff about base damage and swings and accuracy and whatnot. So swings are, you know, a thing. Uh, so we're going to copy that to... Lockheed doesn't have enough room, so we're going to copy a already repaired... Lockheed doesn't have enough room. Gorath has the room. Uh, so we're going to copy a repairable sword over to here. We're going to clean it up. We're going to clean it up. We're going to put that on because it's a good sword. And what's our terriblest sword that we have? That 82, I think, is pretty bad. And we're going to put that 84 over here. We're going to copy that 73 over here. And did we use up? We used up the whetstone entirely. Okay. Uh, 83, 84, 75, 72. All right, well, I think that's fine. Um, two charges on your torch. Oh, because of the amount of time we spent underground, right. Spend enough time underground, your torches get used up in the amount of time that you're using them, I think. So that might have been what happened there. Is it, They only last for a certain number of hours. So, yeah. Okay, so we can leave some stuff there. That guy on the left. It's usually worth trying to do all this stuff because um, the incremental improvements all help. Three rations. We do not have much in terms of available space. Um. Three normal ass rations. We don't need those. I want to get to Zune. There's Zune. Locklear wrapped in the tavern door. 
When it was apparent no one was coming to open up, Locklear shrugged. Well, it seemed the common folk have taken Prince Aretha's laws to heart. Doors only open from midday to midnight, he said with a sigh, but I suppose someone had to ensure the farmers weren't drinking when they were in the fields. Sometimes he really takes all the fun out of life. What else do we got? Aha! The door swung open, blurry-eyed and smelling of alcohol. A 40 ish looking man sneered at them. Well, what do you want? He shouted. Out with it. We're hoping you could give us directions. Directions? Directions? The man's eyes blazed as he snared a wine bottle from the floor. I'll give you directions. Before Locklear could react, he felt the impact of the wine bottle against his skull. Which means that he's probably taken a little bit of stamina damage there. craft off for the time being i'll just put the standards on this defense might have helped in that respect nope <laughs> they're pounded out the door no one answered design the drunk wasn't going to face them down a fair fight he shrugged and turns back i don't know i don't think he's going to answer it now he said touching a tender spot on his head let's go on luckily knocked on the door of the small wooden house and then waited patiently for someone to answer after several seconds a woman appeared and ushered them inside I don't have time to talk unless it's really important, sirs. I have to finish preparing some mushrooms that I picked for the shopkeeper over at uh, Keej's. He nearly ran out of healing restoratives yesterday, and you know what they say, you can kill me, but you can't eat me. That's a strange expression Owen said. What does it mean? To tell the truth, I don't know, the woman replied, her face brightening with a wide grin. Something my baron, that the baron Kevin used to say. Never could make any sense out of it. Now, if you excuse me, I really must be running along. Sometimes it is just flavor we're going to get from people, right? Like, it's just... Here's stuff that happens. Oh, doesn't seem that anyone's about. This place is abandoned. Let's go inside. Oh, that's good. And a light bowstring might be worth uh, worth something to us. It is absolutely worth waiting around until the inn opens. Arc light. Uh, we are gonna do a little bit of shopping first, because maybe I can get rid of these friggin' restoratives. Ah, it's an herb shop. And that's all we can do. Locklear sniffed, rubbing his irritated nose. He struggled against the urge to sneeze, but the smoky interior of the shop made it hard to maintain his demeanor. More annoying, the smoke obscured his view of the uh, vials and jars, which crammed the store's shelves, most of which appeared to contain herbs or incense. Okay. So Dragonstone's interesting. As if some magic within the Azure Stone was awakened by Owen's touch, a dark fluid began to spill through the through a crack in the artifact's mottled surface and down the length of his arm. Where droplets contacted cloth, they shied, but touched the smooth metal, it infused itself and disappeared. So this enchants your weapon, in a way. Killian's root oil. An emerald-colored fluid rippled the length of the flute neck bottles. Groth upended it, then rided it once more. A very light oil it was used by soldiers to temporarily enhance the metallic qualities of their swords and their armor. Again, another enchantment oil. Uh, Redweed Brew. Grush shook the vial, called Tith's Piss among mercenaries. The liquid was famed for its vile metallic flavor and ruddy color, both owing to the fact that the liquid was gathered from the rusty drain, pads, rusty drain pipes of the Temple of Tith. Many claimed the fluid could improve in sword swordplay for a short time. Temporary, uh, temporary boosts is what a lot of these things are, and we are going to find them throughout the game. Do they help? Kind of. Uh, I mean, they do help, but meh. True Sight Tea. The tea is darkest gray-black, brewed by the elves and from roots unique to Elvander. The concoction had a strong herbal aroma and was often said sold as a highly priced spice, though Grath valued it more its fleeting tendency to sharpen sight, a quality which an archer friend had once demonstrated. Improves accuracy from that. And then here's our restoratives. 12 for 57. I'm going to drop him 24. 28 sovereigns. That cost, that was like no time we had to spend to do this. I don't know if my haggling will go up if I check it, if I'll get better prices for it or not, if I haggle, maybe. Usually that has to do with like haggling t for stuff to go down, but let's see here. Uh, I think these are all going to be, yeah, they're all going to be 24s, so that's good. Okay. Go 
probably going to have to go to another shop, maybe even back to, I don't know if Lamut will like my swords or not, but there are places I can go and sell these swords and stuff too. So we will do that. Excellent. We are rich and we have room in our inventories mostly. Will he take the shells? Ugh. Are the shells better liked in other places? That's something I don't know. Uh, let's just have a quick look. Tips and tricks stuff. That doesn't help. Let's go back. Basic walkthrough. Oh no, I wanted to not. Sorry, I'm I'm in another screen right now, looking at um, uh, the website. I'm on the Betrayal at Crondor Look Web. I'm just having a look at um, uh, things I can sell. Technically qualifies as a. Uh, the shells qualify as money and gems. So let's see. Prices can differ substantially from one shop to another. 100% ruby can be sold for 86.6 in one shop or 810 in another shop. So I could sell an 83% gem, I guess. No, there's 83 in the game. That's what it is. Um... I guess 83, 80, uh, there's 83 shells in the game. So I could sell it for 1.1 or I could sell it for 10.8. So it's probably worth waiting until I do a little bit better than that uh, overall. Um, Hawks Hollow is the best place for selling gems. So I'll probably just do that. And as we come back to here, I don't need anything from your store. But because I freed up some space and we have time to kill and there are bodies in the middle of the road. Take their stuff. And block clear is full. So the only person with, with space left currently at the moment is going to be uh, Gorath, and that's fine. We could definitely dupe a lot more stuff right now if we wanted to, but given that we have uh, 466 Sovereigns, that's not a bad way to start um, doing this. I will do a little bit more. I want to also, obviously part of the game is to entertain you guys, so I want to try to entertain you as much as I can. Uh, we will do more of this other... Uh, of more of the busy work of of getting richer and doing other stuff uh, in a bit. Oh, we have made it to a crossroads. So if we were to go east, that will take us on the route to Hawks Hollow, which is where we were talking about going to sell those shells. So let's do that. Okay, there's a dude. So we're going to turn on stealth. And then click on the guy, because I'm pretty sure that's how this works. And then turn on defense and accuracy melee. Oh, casting, I think, is what I want to do for all in. The enemy was waiting for them. They've seen us, Locklear shouted. He shifted his concentration to two places, his legs making certain of his stance and balance, and his opponents wondering how it was they had not been surprised. Immediately, all such thoughts were pushed aside as the enemy swept into their ranks. So Owen, again, only has a few spells. To spare thy eyes, um, he has Invitation, which pulls them towards him. And uh, Gift of Sung, which heals. 
rather is a transfer of health and stamina. Whatever you cast for, it sends it to uh, others. So I'm going to do this. You can barely, barely hear it. Send Lockie over there. I'm going to send Gorath over to here. Cast to spare thy eyes on this dude. Aki will cast this on this dude. And then it's just go around and around. That is, I thought I blinded you. Oh, I see. We're running, are we? Jesus. Casting it on him. I'll have to rest pretty soon. I guess I don't get to rest just yet. Aquia moves to here. There we go. Gorath moves to here. I get to rest. Nice. The battle was won. Search the bodies. All right. What's in here? Poisoned rations. Definitely don't want those. Got some other stuff. What's in here? Some royals. Reasonably good broadsword. And what do you have? Royals? And rations. Who's got my ration packs right now? Okay, well, we're going to put that on you. That's fine for the time being. So I can give you some stuff. I guess maybe I'll give you uh, swords. We'll come back here for the other stuff eventually. Hawk's Hollow is not far from here. Can't do much about picking things up. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, we didn't go to the tavern in Zoom, did we? But we'll go back to the tavern. Uh, let's. Oh, right. I could have thrown out the 18% armor. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Right, we've walked into a temple. Incense swirled. Striding between the columns of the temple, a locklear made for the heavy wooden doors, which had been sealed away against the daylight, which preserved the privacy of any ceremonies in progress. Pulling a tassel of rope, which hung next to the door, he waited the response of the door warden. Temple of Killian. The meditation chamber was spartan and strangely cold, seeming all the colder for the heatless flame which burned in the holy censer. The only bow that had been made to adornment in the temple appeared to be the strange pattern that had been etched upon the wall. The fire was cold. Unnerved by the unnatural flame, Locklear decided to explore elsewhere. Maybe it's teleport, enter. We'll enter first, I think. Locklear pulled the curtains aside. The rear section of the temple was as dramatic as was the meditation chamber. A large pool occupied the center of a lush courtyard and was hemmed in on all sides by an alabaster peristyle with climbing vines. Cloistered immediately off the open area were several arches, doorways either blocked by heavily woven curtains or choked with clouds of obscuring incense. Nearby, a gong sounded immediately. A priest hurried out of a doorway, halting as he caught sight of the unexpected supplicants. Talk, cure, bless, and done. So we're going to talk. They were shown to a chamber. Here, there were no flagstones or chip tiles underneath their feet, but instead a thick carpet of grass jeweled with dew. At the far end of a room, a pair of yew trees overarched a throne of woven reed, upon which was seated a striking-looking woman, her shoulder-length black hair bound behind her back with a green cord. 
I'm the high priestess of this temple, she said musically. Killian welcomes you to her domain. Come, be seated. Listening with keen interest to the stories told by Locklear, the priestess remained as motionless as a statue. At last, she folded her hands in her lap and sighed heavily. That was most entertaining, she said. I particularly liked the part about the drunk. But I advise you in the future to keep an eye on the food you eat. You shouldn't simply gulp down the first thing you find without taking a look at it first. Again, poisoned rations we just found, right? Properly ch chastened, Locklear shrugged his shoulders and promised he would be more careful in the future. I cheered he didn't mind when the high priestess escorted them from the room. And that's it. So... They don't really get into what all the different uh, uh, pre like all the different gods and stuff are for. That's more in the books if you're interested. But anyway, priests bid them farewell, leaving the lushness of the central courtyard. They pass back through the curtains into the deserted meditation chamber. Teleport. The design was odd. I see the mandala interests you. Turning Locklear noticed a thin young man standing in the archway, his hands hidden in the folds of his robe. While the relations between the temples and the new Academy of Magic at Stardock have been cool. It is one of the treasures they have passed on of the Tsurani magic. It's given us great mobility. Mobility, Lockley asked. How can a painting help you move? The acolyte smiled. It would be easier to explain by example. Tell me about a place you're familiar with, a place where you've spent a good deal of time. Lockley shrugged, describing the place he had grown up, the layout of the rooms, the various things associated with his home. Very good, the man replied. As you described those things to me, doubtless you also experienced certain memories through which you were able to relive your past. In the same way, these mandalas help us locate a place... By memorizing a pattern painted on the wall of a specific temple, we may will ourselves there. I could think my way home with this. No, the memory of your home would be too unfocused for you to make the attempt. But if you were to memorize this pattern, you could return here by recalling its image in your mind when, when assisted by the power of another temple. Again, going from temple to temple is how you fast travel in this game. Locklear looked back at the mandala, lost in thought for a moment, his eyes soaking up the intricacies of it. I assume there would be some fee associated with moving between locations? The acolyte nodded. As simple as it is in concept, it still requires a great deal of effort to move even a single individual. Though I'm told the Tsurani Great Ones move about with less effort. I believe Pug wished to restrict our knowledge of this in some ways until we had proven we would not abuse its power. Pug is the... Um, he is the main character of Magician, which is the first book. Um, and so, yeah, the fact that he's being referenced here as being the, the one who wishes to restrict the knowledge of the people in the temples should give you a sense to how far he's come since Magician Apprentice. A bell sounded. Abruptly, a darkly robed priest swept into the room and, and came to a halt behind Locklear. I was alerted that you might desire to use the mandala? Desire, perhaps, but I haven't seen any of the other symbols, Locklear said. I don't suppose you could go with us? I am, I am regret that I cannot assist you, the priest said. My duties require I stay here to guide others that wish to arrive. I am sorry. So I believe we've seen it now because we've walked inside. Uh, that's all it takes. If we need to cure ourselves of anything, if we needed to um, bless any of our stuff, we could do that. Uh, we're not going to do any of that. <laughs> we're just going to exit because now we have a place to, uh, to come back to. And I think time does pass. Ah, yes. So you can camp until healed, which will... We'll just start spinning the dial until you're healed. Um, not always necessary. And an inn will heal us better. Uh, and we're on our way to Hawks Hollow anyway, so we just need to find our way there. Uh, it's probably up that path. No, that's something else. We'll go over there anyway. Why not? Some of the paths in the game are, are just there to, you know. Breath, scan the runes, boss of the mortal clue plate. This should be pretty straightforward, I think. When it comes in from sea to shore, 20 paces, you'll see no less, no more. E G F S O R L A A E A L G seems like a G Erg I mean 3 is pretty easy to do right because you just have to spin everything until it all kind of starts to make sense
Fay, Fog. That's it. And there we go. Yep, Fog. Everyone got that pretty fast. Hell yeah. 118. That's worth a fair bit. Lock picks for Locky. I really want to get uh, Whetstone and actually polish these friggin' uh, things. But that's okay. What is out here anyway? Yeah, sometimes you just can't get rid of a bomb. Ah. Okay, someone had set up camp here. Probably those dudes I killed. Ah, so this happens too. You'll sometimes see uh, farmland and stuff, meaning that little hidden places to go. Locklear gasp. Sever heads sprayed in gray, spun in gray space before him as disembodied arms and legs fill together with a sound much like the clashing of kitchen scullery. Looking closer, he realized the body parts were not in fact body parts, but instead very tarnished pieces of armor that had been suspended from the shop's rafter. You there, careful! May all come down on our heads! A gnomish man approached from the rear of the shop, a match held tight between his fingers. Should have knocked... Well, he didn't hear you from upstairs. I can see why you came, though. Your armor is in quite a state. Another blow to your suit? You look like those lot up there. I'll fix you right up. It's all the same. I prefer to buy an armor's hammer. I'm sure you would, but I'm not in the business of ruining my livelihood. I'm an armorer, and I make my living in repairs. People go fixing their own, and I'm out of business, right? Yep. Joseph, the animals! Everywhere Locklear looked, polished metal gleamed. As much as a Temple of War is any Temple of Tith, the cramped shop contained a startling variety of armor. All he does is fix stuff. So if he tried to fix things, let's, for example, pick this. He just does armor. Six sovereigns and a royal? If I give him that 18%, 29 sovereigns. So he could fix any of our armor, but largely I don't see why at this point. And if we're concentrating on doing it ourselves, we're probably fine. And it's nighttime again. And Owen can't get any better, actually, either. Uh, he heals up to as far as he can heal up to. Um, and then we have to find an inn to sleep in, which means we could go back to Zoom, like we talked about doing, but I do want to make it all the way to Hawks Hollow because we are at 11 o'clock, and that means that it is technically uh, the end of this stream. So let's just... Uh... God, it's so hard trying to remember where I'm supposed to go and or it's like keep moving in this direction but also don't forget to explore like you do in Breath of the Wild let's see here uh we might have well let's see a little further south to Hawks Hollow Yeah, at some points in the game, you can literally, when you don't have to see anything, you can just mini-map um, and just steer yourself along that way. Marry yourself to the uh, to the road and be like, I'm going this way now, and that's fine. I don't need to go looking for chests. I don't need to go looking for dudes to fight. But on the mini-map, they're not there. <laughs> so you can't just... You can't just run and be like, oh, shit. So... Uh, let's see again. Turn on stealth. Turn off these. I don't know particularly if your stealth goes up, like you have to engage to do that, but, um, nope, not that. We want to be casting. All right. The enemy was not surprised. In fact, they seemed eager to accept the challenge and move forward to meet the failed charge. Weapons at ready, shout Locklear. Looks like we're defending this one. Looks like we're going to fight this one on their terms. At least I'm safe behind here for the time being. Use a little of this. And 
and Gorath is too slow to get in place, so I'm going to send him over here to act as a bit of a wall. Now, how long does that last for? It's just a short time. So I'm going to just let him rest. Also, something I found out about, uh, uh, I was reading up some stuff. Um, okay, so now it is time to cast that again. Um, there we go. Donk. Cast that again. You can, um, as long as you're in, in a fight, like you're in a fight situation, you can, uh, as long as you're in here, time doesn't pass and you can rest yourself back to health, which means that if you end up in a trap, traps don't move and they're just waiting for you to do stuff. You can just sit there and rest everybody and essentially just camp out in a trap. So now he's attacking back. It's weird to have a lot of misses, I feel like, when you're playing in, in, a, in a game, because it's like, because um, you expect to, like, I'm going to hit and I'm going to do damage. But then you have all these misses. It's like, I guess if you're, if they're, if everyone's fighting smart, the expectation is that you're dodging, you're preventing them from hitting you. Search the bodies. May have valuable surprise supplies. Make it quick. Good stuff. That's good. Leave those on for the time being. Breath looks for supplies. It's always kind of the same thing over and over, um, unfortunately. And more rations. I don't even think we. Well, I could take those. Time has passed. Enough that it's probably worth it. And some of those. Ah, the mortal lamprey. Not a great weapon, but better than uh, other weapons. And in this case, better than some of the stuff we've been carrying around. I'm going to drop this. I think I can drop this on the body. I sure can. I'll give this to Gorath. He has a slightly better weapon to use now. Please, please tell me that in Hawk's Hollow, is this it? Oh. Generally, there aren't enemies in towns, which is nice. A bell rang. No sooner did Lockley managed to get the door open, he found the shopkeeper who was escorting him inside. The Woolen Man. The lay of the goods store was comforting, uh, familiar, arranged in such a common sense fashion. It only took a few months for Lockley to find the locate the items that were interested uh, interested him. So lots of different places I can look. Ah, amulet of the upright man. Gorath looked at the medallion skeptically, and Crondor's similar amulets were sold as fool's trinkets, ornaments that seemed in all respects like true gold, but were clever fakes run up by unscrupulous magicians. Checking the reverse side, he noted inscription to Banath, the god of luck and of thieves. This increases your lockpick skill just by having it on you. Lots of expensive whatevers. There's the Gilder's Pass key, there's a Virtue key. Uh, Virtue keys... This is a virtue key, or I'm a Gwali's uncle, Gorath said with a grin, tapping the dorsal-shaped head. Originally, these keys were only made for chastity belts, but in the last hundred years or so, they expanded the use of the design. The locks this will open protect very valuable items. You can tell because it's 270 gold. Gilder's pass key. Gorath wiped a bit of dirt off the key. Made from sterling silver, the Gilder's pass key was a stunning piece of craft work. 
It would seem profane. Such beautiful work was wasted on such simple tools. And then Ring of the Golden Way. The ring was a simple unadorned band of gold which fit awkwardly in his finger. Worth only a small crafter's fee in the gold used in the forging, the ring was still charming in its own humble way. What mystified him was the peculiar way it warmed when someone moved near him. So this, I believe, uh, gives you a bonus to stealth. Something along that line. The shells, I bet you'll want. Yeah, that's, see, it's better than the other place, and we're going to just accept that. We want to get the shelves uh, out of our hands. That's pretty good. He probably doesn't want this at all. Yep, didn't think so. I have no idea who's going to want that, ultimately. Are you going to want this? Didn't think so. I uh, don't think I have anything else on me that I can give you at this point. I need to find another shop, I guess. Because we have stuff to unload. It is buy, sell, and exit. Door opened a fraction of an inch. Your hands, a voice commanded. Pardon, what did you say? Locklear asked. Show me your hands, the voice repeated from the darkness. Palms up, thumb out, and don't make any sudden moves. Faintly amused, Locklear complied, complied and Disney asked, extending both his hands for the stranger's examination. On command, he turns his hands over, again waiting for the judgment of the voice of the house. You pass, the voice in the house pronounced at last, but his voice did not sound relieved. All right, then listen carefully, don't ask any questions. What was all that hand business about? I said, no questions, the voice snapped. Suffice it to say, I know that you can be trusted with what I have to say because you don't bear the sign. You should be on the lookout for scrolls or anyone bearing scrolls. Read them carefully. They could save your life. Be safe. Scrolls, look at ass? Why? What's in these scrolls? Does it have anything? Abruptly, the door slammed, door slammed shut. Again, more stuff to tell us about how the game works. Ah, a man invited inside. Come in, my name's Lucan. He introduced himself as he slapped his guest in the back. Nice to meet you. I haven't had visitors in some while. You know, it gets kind of lonely up here and the kids don't come down too often. You kids? They're Marvel, don't you think? And Locklear sears Lucan's risk and gave it a savage twist, forcing a shining sovereign to fall from the man's pained fingers. Everyone watched in shock silence as the gold clattered to the floor. I almost didn't feel you nabbing that from my purse, Locklear said. You're not a bad thief, but you're not good enough. Don't kill me, Lucan pleaded. Please, I don't have anything to give you, but I'll do anything. I'll, I'll teach you. You'll what? Growth sputtered. Yeah, I'll teach you. Yes, that's it, Lucan said, his face brightening. Spare my life and I'll teach you everything. I'll teach you what I know about locks. Everything. What do you say? Didn't click on the lockpick thing. I wonder if I should. Do I get to come back here if I do? Like, you get a boost to this. I I, I do know that, but it's like... I, I want to... I don't know what happens if you don't. I don't think we kill him at all. I don't think we're in the business of just killing people. Yeah, but then do you lose the the opportunity is the question, right? Uh, let me just have a look here. Uh, in the website that I'm looking at is... I might not get a chance to come back. It's true. So let's just have a look here. Uh, oh yeah, there's lots of things to 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 do. Actually, some things that we haven't even done yet. Um, And here, Lucan can teach you a trick, he says. That's tough. Maybe I just take it. I'll just take it. Lockley arched an eyebrow. Very well, Lucan. He said you may teach us, but if we leave here with any less than we came in with... No, no, no. You have my word. Just sit here and I'll be right back. I'll go and fetch my practice locks. I'll be right back. Nice try, but no. You're staying here, Locklear. Push Lucan to a seated position. Just tell Gorath where your practice locks are and he'll fetch them. Then we'll start our lessons. Having resigned himself to the fact he wasn't going to escape, Lucan lectured and demonstrated for the better part of the day before he set his practice locks aside. That's it. He mumbled, wiping perspiration from his brow. That's all I know. Good enough, Locklear said. I think we will be on our way now. And Lucan, for your continued help, health, I would suggest that you get out of the thieving business. And lockpick has gone up for everybody. 66. Come on. 
10, 20. It's pretty good. Is this an inn? Uh, lack of the door latch. The sign of the inn was lightly chartered by the local lord to insert the safety travelers. Hopefully it also mean the inn's furnishings would be suitable. Except for a thin strip of floor that led between the door, the counter, and the stairs, a gray cowl of dust coated the inn's fixtures. This is the Dusty Dwarf Inn. The patrons of the inn seemed similarly stagnant as they glanced up lazily from their mugs of ale and brandy. So, my choices are barmaid, innkeeper, bard, er, that person, that person. So, barmaid lets me get access to my characters so I can select different things. You can also buy a practice loot in the game, which means then you can just like sit in a campsite and just jam I believe that's everything. So now we bard. Don't want any of that. Are you kidding me? Bard. I think the lockpick gain was actually more about getting a um. Uh, you got a plus five or whatever. Like, it's just like everybody gets plus five. So it might not be something you had to actually train. I'm pretty sure that a lot of those training situations are just things where you try them. Oh, good. We got kicked out, but our barding ability is increased. Is that because it's closed? Don't say it's closed. Okay, good. It's still open. Bar made again. Uh, turn off barding. Haggling to be on, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what assessment is good for. I know it just goes up over time. Other people have... I haven't done that much studying into how all these things work, so... Uh, let's see here. Talk to you! Locklear tapped the woman's shoulder. She slowly she turned to look at him, but rather than greeting him with a smile, in her gaze was a look he had thought reserved only for things that crawled on the ground or lapped up table leanings in the dooryard. What do you want? I was hoping perhaps we could talk. Locklear ventured, passed the time with a little conversation. Why, she said curtly. Opening his mouth to reply, but suddenly finding himself bereft of adequate speech, he made a small sound, which he was certain sounded quite unmanly. Stabbing him with her exquisitely beautiful stare, she smiled. I thought as much. Goodbye, sir. I'm sure you have a brilliant oratory career before you. We are not that smooth. The table was cleaned for them, sitting down on a splintered bench across from the man. Locklear shared a bit of the mercenary's bread as he listened to a story about a failed love affair with a married woman. As the story progressed from a sentimental recounting to a drunken blubber, it became evident the man had no intention of finishing the tale anytime soon. That's terrible, Locklear intoned around a mouthful of bread, his attention fixed on the wood instead on the wooden boards behind the mercenary said. Awful. Tragic. Ah, there you are, Stuart said, laying a heavy hand on Owen's shoulder. Are you lads still going to help me carry in the bags like we talked about? Initially at a loss, but suddenly understanding they had been rescued, Locklear capped his hands together. Yes, yes, of course. Her drinking companion will forgive the absence. Blearily, the man looked up at them and nodded, waving for someone to come and fill his cup. Now, innkeeper. So we may in. Seven sovereigns, not bad. Uh, depending on the quality of the place that we stay, that can also lead to us not getting a good night's sleep, uh, not recovering enough. And um, uh, also uh, losing some money, potentially. Depending on where you stay, that can happen. Well, let's try it. Seven sovereigns for the night. Rooms upstairs. Have a good rest. The room was cramped, shrugging. Owen stepped over, staring, snoring bodies and selected a spot of floor which looked like it might be comfortable for the night. While Gorath squeezed into a bed already occupied by three disheveled-looking men. Ah, the romance of traveling, Owen said with a chuckle. Gorath yawned. Sleep well tonight, Master Ass? Not exactly, Owen replied, rubbing his eyes. The fellow was sharing her bed, tossed all night, kept burying his... Oh, fuck. Kept burying his elbows in her guts. And his fingers in her money pouches! Groth growled, examining their finances. He stole a handful of golden sovereigns. Night Master smiled nervously. You understand that nothing that the establishment can't be held responsible. I can sign up for another night, though. Are you, uh, interested? No. Another time. So you charged me more for that. I wonder if I should... If I can, Bard again, since it's a new day.
That'll do. And it's gone up again. Gorath got better. Can I do it again? <laughs> okay. Can I do it again? <laughs> oh my god! You're not supposed to be able to do this! <laughs> Most places when you go to the when you go to an inn, you can only bard once, and if you try to come back and do it again, you can't. Alright. Well, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna drop a save. I am going to uh We're gonna leave Piffo one alone, because I think it's a, those ones. I'm gonna save one more. I mean, just keep doing this. It's fine. But, uh, yeah, I, in fact, am gonna bard all night. <laughs> I'm gonna bard a little bit more, uh, grind up until I get to a better spot, and then, uh, and, and we'll do that. We'll just, we'll just bard a little more. I'm gonna try to see if I can, um, rip the disc on a different machine as an ISO, and then copy it to this computer, which doesn't have a, uh, a drive, and then see if I can't get this. See, this version of DOSBox is set up specifically only to, uh, it doesn't let me declare a lot of stuff. This is just what got packaged from GOG. And I mean, good for GOG, for, for whatever, but the configurator for it doesn't give me a lot of choices for what I can do. So I'm gonna see what I can do. Um, I might have to just change the config files, um, The the text config files to just be like, no, there's this, yes, there's a CD. The, the sound files are located here, like all that kind of stuff. Um, and then see if I can't get that stuff, um, set up and hopefully I can get it all set up. That's what I'm hoping for is that I can, um, uh, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna take a lot of, of work to get this working. Hopefully. Oh, defend reloaded. Johnny glitch says it's a good DOS box manager. Okay. I might just try that. That might be a simpler way to kind of, uh, configure stuff because I mean, I'm fine with jump into your DOS things, do this, do that. I might try doing the sound file, um, up, uh, upgrade on it as well, or the, the, uh, the sound driver upgrade on it to see if we can't get everything to operate at the same time. Um, we'll see how I feel throughout the week. And if it's like one of those things I actually want to concentrate on doing or not, if I'm just kind of like, I'm sick of this, but regardless, uh, what I am not sick of is streaming for you people. Go back to the booth for this, in fact. Um, it would be, it'd be great if I could just have the music playing in the background at this point, actually. Um, hang on. I did just watch this the other day, so. Can you hear this? Great. So, let's uh, let's welcome everybody who was here because a lot of you came in. The sub notifier was going nuts. Thank you for sh showing up tonight for P Play It Forward, uh, inaugural uh, the inaugural stream of trying to play my way through Betrayal at Crondor for the first time. We are going to we're going to mess this up. We're going to do a lot of ridiculous stuff that you're not supposed to do at the very beginning. Uh, I'm gonna. Do what I can. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna be different. The, uh, the expectation is we're gonna do a lot of dupe, duping to make a lot of money. We're gonna, uh, once we made a lot of money, we're, uh, then be able to buy a lot of things to be able to do stuff. I might, I'm, I might just drop in and do a little of that myself if I feel like, you know, hey, I'll, I'll go burn an hour or two playing this to just kind of like dupe a lot of restoratives buy some bows, do a lot of the, do the broken uh, bow trick, like whatever it is I have to do there. We'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. We'll figure out what, what's necessary. Um, and then set things up in the game so it, it's a little simpler for me later on. So it's like I can, I can get a lot of, um, 
make a lot of money, be able to buy stuff quite quickly. You don't have to go around uh, scrounging for money and, and looking through a whole bunch of stuff. We'll see what happens. Uh, so let's thank everybody who showed up. Uh, where's my mouse? My mouse is over here. I'm going to be looking in this direction because that's where the window is that has all you in it. Uh, I want to say hi to Goma Fada Nomad and Red Shoes Jeff, Kaku Epsilon, Brindlebore, Superhero 7, uh, Wowot, Malkmaven1176, Thunderbird32, Eblock with 150 bits, Zaverin, Kirby Sliver, uh, that raid showed up at this point. So a couple of raids. We had Affinity Artifacts and Foxmar. Thanks, Foxmar. I didn't, I, everyone was talking about, but anyway. Zyme86, uh, Ogier300, Dentargan, Shark Hero 08, Xanto69 with 50 bits. Uh, Wiggins came with that 45 uh, person raid. That was cool. Um, Wither, uh, 62, uh, Chris Lewis Rose, and uh, Starshock 2002 with a big 89 months there, in fact. And a lot of you, different months, different amounts of time. Thank you for all those who came back for filling in the time. And thank you for uh, the bits, the bits, the bits. Uh, this was a good night. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be a good game to play. And if I had definitely wanted to make this super easy on me, <laughs> um... Like, we're going to do the side quests in Chapter 1. I'm looking at... I just looked at the walkthrough, and it's like, did you know you could actually go through the Macmordane Kadal and actually do the whole fight with the Brockner? And I'm like, really? I thought that was something you had to come back to later in the game. No. You can go up to Tear Sog, and you can do some other things, too. I'm like, oh. Oh, if there's ways to actually do that, then maybe I should concentrate on doing that as well, because then I can get myself nicer stuff, too. I may, um, at this point, with, like, 400 Sovereigns on me, it's like, maybe I can buy some Elven armor. Maybe I can... You know, I'm not going to buy great swords yet, but we'll see, right? Um... I'll try some. I'll try some stuff out. We'll see what happens. I I don't want to do any hex editing on the game. I I'm tempted though to just be like, you know what? I'm actually enjoying the bits of the game, and if I could just do some hex editing and bump up my amount of money that I have, uh, that might be a good way to get going. Because when I did this initially, it felt like a uh, when I was doing this whole thing initially, I played a lot of time, but I played like multiple nights at home just going through the wrong way to get all the way to Krondor to start chapter one. And then when I did that, I put the game down and was like, okay, done with that for a while. Which was not great because it meant that I missed a lot of information. I also did things like going into the chapter seven areas and picking up stuff that I probably shouldn't have picked up because it's kind of necessary for it to either be there later in the game. Because once you get it, it's like, you've used it now. You've used a magical scroll on Owen and he's not in the later this one chapter and he, you're going to need that spell in the later chapter. I'm like, Oh, I screwed up. So you can't dupe scrolls. Right. So, so there's a bit of that. Uh, but regardless, we are done for the night. Please enjoy the, um, ads that are coming up and stick around because stuff that's coming up next. I literally have no idea how to tell you about all that. Uh, Wednesday tomorrow. Is it nine o'clock on Wednesdays? I can't remember. I know that CTS is tomorrow. I believe they're doing another Among Us, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then stay tuned for uh, Tinker Taylor on Thursdays. There's the long game on Thursday, one of the two. But then I'll be back again on Thursday. Uh, and then I'll also be back again on Saturdays all at the same time. We're trying to, I'm trying to keep this consistent. And also it's the time when I'm most awake. Um, and then, of course, Chill Point on Fridays as well. There's all, all sorts of stuff's happening. Go check out the schedules. Uh, LoadingReadyRun.com slash live, I believe, takes you to that schedule. It's been a long time since I've done streams, so there's a lot of things I don't remember about where I'm supposed to send people. But this will be a long stream. What? Oh. This is North Warden Pigs. It's I don't think it's actually ever used in the game, <laughs> but it's on the CD. So cool. Everyone have a good night. I will talk to you again later. Uh, stay safe. Stay healthy. Uh, stay inside if you gotta. Um, that's important. And, and you know, get that vaccine uh, if you can. If you're, it's in your area, if you're able to get it, please get it. And if, you, if you're not able to use it yet, uh, try to convince some other people that they probably should. I'll, I'll see you guys later.